Hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> ew! <laughs> ew! 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 What is all that? Oh. Basketball Jones! I got a basketball Jones! Kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Okay! Here we go. Woo! The bomb! What the bomb? Fantastic. Ah, blew his toe off. Oh, Bob. Taking that toe. Get out of my fucking game! Whose house? Mira's house. Bitch, I run this city. But only consensually. Girl, you know I'm gonna ask for permission. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Future Gamers Podcast. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hunter, and as always, I am joined by Trollbeard. I am not here of my own consent. Please send help. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you escaped last week. How did I escape last week? You're like, hey, bud, I'm dead tired. I was like, okay, champ. I, I was just trying to play into your bit, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Oh, Whatever. Cool. Okay. Hey, hey, Josh, it's me. You can't see it on the cameras because there ain't no video. Hey, nope. Josh, it's me. Shut up, shut up. Arthur Morgan's going to shut up and kick the shit out of me. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay, there's a story I got to tell you when we get to the Red Dead part. Okay. Yeah, we're talking about Red Dead today. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a very uh, relevant situation I encountered. All right. Well then, let's get right into it with uh, our weekly updates. Alright, yep, and there's some uh, there's some Fortnite stuff going on, huh? Some Fortnite mares? Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, really interesting. So they kind of brought in a little bit of the Save the World elements into like a spooky, fun Halloween mode. Huh. The the unfortunate thing is like they're still like working out the kinks as it goes and it's only for like another week maybe i think it's got like five days left currently as of us recording this before it clears out but yeah so there's like the cube in the middle of loot lake that had lifted up the island it exploded and now the island is in all sorts of pieces and chunks of the cube are now on the map and they spawn these enemies I, I would call them husks but that's what the zombies are called in the save the world yeah and these guys are kind of different i mean they're not they're not too dissimilar they kind of have the same patterns and functions but yeah so these enemies of different varying types spawn in these areas and if you kill them you can get like ammo and loot off of them and killing each one of the varying like levels of difficulty based on how much like like their rank essentially like their level gives you some shields like the weak ones give you like three shield the big ones give you like ten and uh yeah so like you're just out there running around firing at these guys because they'll chase you if you get close and at different points in the storm there's the there were already the corrupted zones which are where the runes the big cube left on the map were before the cube lifted the lake. So the cube traveled around to all the corrupted zones and lifted them up out of the ground and all this weird shit happened and then the cube exploded. So at all the corrupted zones, that's where the big chunks of the cubes are that you're always going to find zombies. But as you progress through the map, through the game of a round, because it's still a regular game of Fortnite, you're still shooting each other. Mm -hmm. You still got to worry about other people as well as zombies now. But uh, random like lightning strikes will hit, and a chunk of cube will appear, and it'll be a smaller version of the big enemy spawners. So like as you're going and you think you're safe for a second, all of a sudden you hear a lightning strike, and then all of a sudden it, like three zombies pops out and starts running at you. Like, well, god damn it, man! Yeah, that sounds like uh, aren't there zombies in Blackout? Uh, yeah. But it's a permanent thing. It's a permanent thing at specific areas when the box is about to spawn. So, like, there's a a mystery box, like, from the regular zombies mode from the previous Call of Duties. You see, like, the giant beam of light telling you a box spawned, 
and then that means a wave of zombies spawned. So you go kill all the zombies in that area, then the box opens and you get specific loot, you can only get those zombie areas. Right. Uh, but in this, you know, it's just random loot and ammo drops out of these as you got kill them. And they're kind of a free way for you to pick up some shields if you can't happen to find any shields from your regular looting habits. And Plus, find... they also like, screw you over every now and then. And for the first couple of days, they were fucking lagging the servers like crazy. <laughs> and they were super loud, so you couldn't hear anybody like running up at you over the zombies and you get shot in the ass cheeks when you weren't looking behind you because you didn't hear anybody. But they smoothed it out. But again, by the time they got it smooth, you had like four or five days left. <laughs> right. I feel like Fortnite is one of those games <clears throat> that's just... And there's a lot of games like this where the kinks are never going to get worked out. Because as soon as they do, they're going to introduce something new and cool and that's going to add more kinks. <laughs> yeah, well, like I'm saying, like, like I say, like the, the majority of the experience is like flawless. It's just randomly when they throw in some of these weird new modes. Yeah. It takes them a few days. But the problem is they do so many of the limited time modes like the Fort Nightmares is that it's going to be gone in a week, two weeks, and then maybe they bring it back as a different form. So with the update that dropped Fort Nightmares, they made a change to where they had a limited time mode called Soaring 50s. Mm -hmm. So basically, the Soaring 50s mode was a standard 50v50, but you could deploy your glider from height at any time. Huh. So, currently in the Fort Nightmares mode, they've re-enabled that in the regular squads, but there are no regular squad games currently. Well, actually, they added regular squads back, because enough people complained. Yeah. But if you're, like, a solo player or a duo player, you don't get to play anything but Fort Nightmares currently. But you do, in any of the modes, as of right now, they're testing it out. If you build up, you just jump off, hit your glider. It's almost impossible now to kill anybody with fall damage. Okay. But it also has enabled so much extra mobility because you can just, oh, hey, I need to get somewhere fast. You build up like five ramps high, jump off and glide for a mm -hmm. bit, build up again, five ramps high, jump wide. Damn. You can cover the map way faster. So it's, it's this real interesting trade-off of them just trying out new things because they've done other mobility things before. You know, way back they had this item called the Impulse Grenade, which was just basically a shockwave. You throw it down and it pushes everybody away from the blast. Okay. So you would throw one down at your feet and jump and it'd fucking chuck you, huh. you know, pretty far. But the issue was with the shockwave grenade is you took fall damage from them. Like, if you didn't do it correctly, mm -hmm. you could screw it up real bad and lose a lot of health, potentially die from your mistake. But it also led to a lot of fun clips. You'd see a lot of streamers, a lot of competitive players, you know, messing around. And they'd see somebody near a cliff. They'd build up to block their bullets, jump over hit them with the impulse grenade and they'd fly off to their death. There was also a lot of friend on friend trolling yeah, with that. That's what I would <laughs> imagine. So they added a upgraded version of the impulse grenade called the shockwave grenade. Okay. Which a little bit ago in the video we were watching they found some. They're these purple things that give you both the impulse effect and the low gravity effect. So you go further now, and you fall slowly, okay. so you don't take fall damage. So it's gotcha. just a win-win. So it's just a mobility tool without any negatives. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So now with the glider deploy, the shockwave grenades are absolutely insane because you just throw yourself yeah. 20 feet up in the air, 30 feet up in the air with a shockwave, then hit your glider at the top, and now you're flying for you know like a minute. Jeez. Yeah, so previously they had also had jetpacks. 
the jetpacks were like way too hard to balance correctly because it allowed the people that were good to be better mm-hmm. and just allowed them to just shit on people unfairly because <laughs> it's like all of a sudden you see a guy who's like this crazy good builder just randomly jump in 360 as he goes up five stories and he's got like a six story tower out of nowhere now <laughs> and he's shooting you from the high ground because you don't have a jump pack I don't even understand how these people are building like this <laughs> just, what but, the uh, hell <laughs> but yeah with the jet pack as well it was crazy because it was at a time when there was no other alternatives really to fall damage. Mm-hmm. So if you had a jetpack, all you had to do was like go somewhere high, build up, make a sky base, which is basically you just building like ramps through the air and just creeping from way above because not everybody looks that far up. And then if you catch a snipe on somebody that's not looking because you have the ultimate high ground, that's all to your advantage but if they shoot you down no risk because you can just hit you know the jump button and just feather your way down just like like, it was it was a no risk only reward tool huh because you can screw up pretty badly with the shockwave and send yourself even though there's no fall damage if you accidentally do it wrong and you flick yourself out into the storm late game and you don't have another one to get yourself back in people have you know even with no fall damage have actually killed themselves and lost a game at the end because they just died to the storm because they made one mistake yeah so the jetpack was just hey as long as you you know use it correctly there's no downsides (laughs) so I think that's why they pulled it out because it was sounds like it so yeah with the redeployed thing it kind of completely changes the flow of the game right now which is kind of fun because I think this was an update with the silliness of the Fort Nightmares mode with adding you know NPCs on the map to shoot it it reminds people hey this game is intended to be fun it's not this sweaty <sighs> fucking major league gaming esport yeah it's, it's, it's a goofy game yeah it's a goofy game. Enjoy it. Shut your fucking mouth. Have fun. Right. And a lot of people were so mad immediately. It's like, man, I don't want these zombies, man. I want my regular mode. It's like, fair enough. They'll bring it back. This is a limited mode. Yeah. Have fun while it's there. If you don't like it, just take a fucking break. Oh, was that big goblin thing a person's uh, glider? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, there's all sorts of spooky gliders right that's now cool. for Halloween. There's one that's a giant spider that a lot of people are getting triggered by. Oh, hell by. no. <laughs> there's one that's like a giant like ghost bat. They had a crazy like frost dragon last season. Hmm. You could unlock. Actually, no, I think the frost dragon was paid. All the other Viking like Ragnarok skin stuff was you know part of the battle pass but right. uh yeah man it's it's just been funny to me like the super triggered weirdos like like it's a goofy fake spider in a video game relax buddy yeah you were talking about the people getting upset that it's like not super serious that happens in hearthstone too yeah because mm-hmm. i i've actually like hearthstone streamers are kind of like league streamers where they're like right at the cusp of like some of the most toxic people I've I've watched for people some of them yeah yeah it's like I try to tell somebody you know the the scariest weirdest place to go on twitch where that that is the just eating like category oh right it has has a name in Korean I forget because that's where that genre kind of started and the makeup ones like they're either like super insane like toxic people just like playing with their makeup and gossiping about all sorts of horse shit really or it's really attractive women with just fucking the chat is all creeps it's like Jeez. <laughs> yeah man like cause again a lot of the like food eating thing was sad young men watching really attractive girls eat food 
because it, you know, was like this comforting like girlfriend experience. That's a that's a category of certain websites we shouldn't talk about. Yeah, so we're getting off yeah. topic now. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so yeah, like that stuff, like the communities behind these things are the toxicity. And there's no real fixing it at this point. Like it's kind of too far gone. Yeah. You know, like it's just it's silly that people get that upset about it. And like I said, with Hearthstone, people get upset at the RNG. It's like, well, you should probably play something else then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is that's the game. This is inherent in the design of every card game. Yeah, and it's just like I don't like building in Fortnite. So you know what I did? I didn't go, you know, cussing and screaming at Epic or calling people names or anything. I just didn't play it. It's not yeah, for me. you just move on. Like, there's something here you like. But you're just too mad to move on. Like, Fortnite and Hearthstone didn't cost you any money. Move on. Pretty unless much, you yeah. Paid, unless you paid money, there was no investment here. Yeah, but even if you paid money for Fortnite, how much is the Battle Pass? Battle Pass is 10 bucks. Yeah. But the skins, like, I, I've easily now broke. Oh, well, if you're stupid enough to buy skins before you realize you like the game or not. <laughs> oh, no, like, yeah, I've been playing this shit for over a year. Yeah. Like, like I've mentioned before, like, my first two wins happened before the actual Battle Royale was released to the yeah. public. Like, that's how long I've been playing Fortnite was when it launched on PS4 as the Save the World mode before Battle Royale existed. Yeah. Although... Uh, kind of a related news story. Uh, earlier, I guess two weeks ago now, since we put off yeah. the podcast last week because we both kind of were fucking tired. Like, I really didn't want to do the podcast last week because I was tired. And then you were like, man, I'm really tired. I was like, cool. Yeah, let's, I let's pretty much rebuilt on. my whole inside of my house. <laughs> but uh, so one of those weeks, like within the past two weeks, Epic announced that they've delayed making the Save the World free-to-play until next year. So that's going to be cross-play, right? Yeah, that's, assume... that is cross-play currently. Okay. It's just... you. It's a paid mode right now. Of course, now. yeah. I'll absolutely play that. But the thing is, is like I'm hoping, based on that news, is that before they do the free-to-play, because they've been making some pretty good like adjustments... Mm -hmm. to the game it's just like the whole base mechanics of how the entire save the world mode works need to be rebuilt from the ground up like oh, really? it's so fucking obtuse and like old free to play horse shit huh. it I mean there's so many layers so many currencies so many things that affect so many other things really? that it doesn't really explain like, like it is fucking stupid like, oh damn! Like, yeah. I, as someone who played probably you know sixty to eighty hours to save the world before I just hit the dead wall of like, well, this was fun until I literally ran out of shit to do that wasn't going to take me like fucking like destiny raids worth of grinding to get basic shit, and then there are still like real world timers for certain things. Oh really? So like some of the crafting you would do, you still have to wait like a day shit to you know get the rewards from this thing it, like like there's so many layers of like small problems and horse shit with the well, save the world mode yeah maybe they yeah. are redoing it cuz why would they delay it they could just set it free right now yeah i part of their statement was kind of like hey we want to make this a better experience to something to that effect like like it gave me hope that they were going to fix the game before they release hundreds of other people out there into it. Because, yeah, like, people are currency. Like, you're you're saving people. So, like, as you complete missions, yeah. like, one of, you, one of the things you unlock is, like, you, you rescue 20 people, but then you've got to spend people as a currency to build certain what? things. <laughs> like, 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 the people don't die. They're moving over to do a thing. And the reward of that thing is you getting Do you gear to the farm. I guess. <laughs> and we're not killing them. We're just sending them to the farm. Yeah, they just went upstate oh, <laughs> with that's, Lassie. That's <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> yeah, 
Like, I just saved them from this weird storm that turned, like, 90% of the world's population into yeah. zombies overnight. That is some, uh, I hate to make reference this show, but, uh, The Walking Dead, when those people save them and it turns out they're cannibals, spoilers for a yeah. show that's shitty. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, so... Yeah, I hope, I hope it's, I hope they redo it, I hope it's, you know, like, I, I don't really know anything about it, what you're saying does sound kind of shitty, uh, but yeah. I, I would love to play Save the World mode, because I like the shooting and everything in Fortnite, I just hate the competitive building, so I would yeah, absolutely like, play the Save the World mode. That's the thing, is like, it was just like, the design choices are so weird, because so much of what people wanted was, hey, is this kind of like Minecraft? It's like, no. You've got a base you build for yourself. You can invite people in, but unless you give them the options to build, they can't do anything. Yeah. And, uh... You've got to just occasionally go there and start at the generator to start higher and higher tier difficulty waves of hordes coming in. Okay. And you've got to defend it. And then there's other things, like where your regular missions you do you go out into like a randomly generated instance which like the the map building of mm -hmm. like the random generation in Fortnite was always really cool like the tile sets they had and the features of finding loot like there's a, there's there was promise there in the base function of the game just the design of how everything works is so fucked like <laughs> But yeah, like you go in and a lot of the objectives are go here. You got to gather resources. Yeah. Cuz not you don't always have all your materials to build. And then you go out there, build up a little fort, add traps everything, and then defend waves of enemies while like your hot air balloon lifts off. Right. But yeah, like I had mentioned before previously that like the the top tier difficulty level Candy Valley hadn't even been finished the last time I was playing like the save the world mode because like literally it was like you get there and you just see like solid white blank texture assets like the the stuff still worked it just didn't have like finalized art on it damn and like certain missions you couldn't even complete because they weren't there but so Candy Valley over the year or so since I really stopped playing because, like, pretty much as soon as Battle Royale dropped, I had already stopped playing Save the World. Yeah. yeah I think a lot and of people then, had. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know the exact numbers on how many people bought Save the World, but, like, it was a successful launch. Mm -hmm. When that was a $40 game at retail when Save the World first launched. But anyway, it... They've been using the Canny Valley, apparently, like they've been doing a lot of the limited time modes in oh, okay. the Battle Royale. So, like, all their weird themed holiday stuff, you've been going to the Canny Valley and playing through that event. <laughs> so, like, oh, it's a desert map this time. Oh, hey, it's this. Oh, hey, it's uh, the Fort Nightmares version of Saves the World. Because the Fort Nightmares event is also going on in Save the World. Just no one talks about it. Because no one gets clicks on Save the World. <laughs> right. Yeah, Epic is doing big things. Uh, one of the other stories we want to talk about would be the fact that three new investors came in to Epic to the tune of $1.5 billion. Yeah, it was uh, 1.25 even. 1.25? Yep. So an extra $200 million in there. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty crazy. Uh, they got funding from investors KKR, Iconic, Capital, Smash Ventures, Axiomatic, Vulcan Capital, Kleiner Perkins, and Lightspeed Venture Partners. So, they're yeah. joining Tencent, Disney, and Endeavor. Yeah, so, not only with the sheer amount of money they've already made on Save the World, or Battle Royale skins... Now they've got extra investment. So Epic is sitting nice. Epic is also publishing games, right? Yeah, they're they're probably low, sir. There we go. Hopefully we're back on the stream now. 
Now I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, I think that was. I think that was on your end because the it whole was. stream crashed. Yeah. Hopefully we are back on now. Yeah, I'm seeing the B right back. Okay, let me put it back to. Sorry about that, folks. No problem. So before we got disconnected, I had mentioned. Uh, I believe Tim Sweeney, the CEO and co-founder, is still like one of the majority shareholders. Right. So Epic, as a business, people employed by Epic and people in control of Epic still have the majority. So a lot of these investors have, you know, seats now on the board of directors and stuff like that. But Epic themselves can still vote out a lot of stuff. Right. I, yeah, I think Epic is still the majority holder. Yes, sir. So, so it's it's interesting. I'm hoping they do not only like try to expand more the Unreal Engine platform. Yeah. Be, because uh, the Unreal Engine platform is really powerful. It's really handy. It's open source. So anybody wanting to learn can go in and mess around and contribute to it. There's just, you know, a publishing fee if you actually make right. and commercialize a product. Uh, they've got the asset marketplace, which right at the beginning of the massive Fortnite success, they made the cut better for all the developers using it. So the people that were selling stuff through that market now are getting more money. And the crazy thing was they paid everybody back for the difference in the new split. You right, know, we talked about that on our previous show. Yeah, so Epic's like being real good guy Epic for as much as they can be. And I hope they invest that for the future because the Save the World needs a lot of work. Right, and apparently they're opening new offices in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. So... Yeah, I hope they use that money to make the, the Unreal Engine better and publish some some new games. That would be neat. I just... Uh, I'm curious to see, since uh, a lot of the game publishing issues in China are still going on, mm -hmm. with Tencent investing even further in new companies outside of China... That that that's that's interesting to see how big the Chinese market's going to affect all of the gaming industry because yeah. you know Fortnite still isn't in China, which is insane that this game has made all this money and still there's no there's no legitimate way for them to spend their money in China on this. PUBG is right. PUBG Mobile is oh, PUBG just mobile? is well Pu PUBG Mobile is where all the money is made currently. Oh, fair enough. On PUBG. Because that's where they sell all the crazy cosmetic stuff. And is Call of Duty out over there already? Blackout? Uh, I don't believe so. Tencent, I want to say, is like the primary licensee of a lot of the Activision products to... Really? Even that? Re ...redistribute in China? Jesus and Christ. since there's still like that kind of temporary ban on approving any new game licenses in China... I still don't believe that's been wrapped up. Damn. Uh, yeah, it's insane. But yeah, here's here's looking to the future of Fortnite. Regardless of all the people in the world that are just grumpy old fucks and want Fortnite to die already. <laughs> yeah, I think it's dumb, and I'm not a. I don't like Fortnite. I think it's dumb. People want it to die. I think it's. It's just a thing now. It's it's the new Minecraft. It's the new Call of Duty. It's just it's part of the uh, the culture. It's part of the ecosystem now. Yeah, and you want to talk about being part of the culture when adults and kids are out there doing Fortnite dances. That's right. that's ridiculous. When when professional football players win a game and then right. like infinite dab in the end zone. Like, <laughs> yeah, and speaking of the culture, they're coming out with a. Uh, Fortnite Nerf Rifle. Yes, sir. Look at that. <laughs> uh, now, I'm I'm pretty into Nerf. Uh, as some of you folks may know, there's some Nerf live streams up on the Future Villains channel. Uh, me and Babusa are getting very into it. We're going to be doing 
nerf stuff once a month, the nerf battles and stuff. So this kind of like is a combination of both of those worlds. It looks pretty rad. Yeah, um, it's, it's very accurate to the model in the game, which is a cartoony version of the actual gun yeah. in real life. It is a, uh, a flywheel, so it's an automatic. So you just hold down that little orange button on the handle, and it revs up the gun, and then you pull the trigger, and it shoots the darts. So my only problem with it, like I was telling you, is it looks too realistic. And like yeah. It doesn't look realistic. It really doesn't. But from far away, because the Nerf community likes to mod and paint their guns, so I could see somebody painting this thing black or tan. And going out to a park for a nerf battle, and it just looks real. So, I personally don't care for stuff like that. I don't like it when people make toy guns look real, and then take them into a public setting. Yeah. But that's why Thankfully, you have to have the, big, the, uh, ridiculous the orange tip colors. you have to have. Yeah, that that's fine. That's Hopefully, no one's stupid enough to think that that's real. <laughs> But. Yeah, also, a lot of, like, conventions, even when they have the obvious fake orange tip, they still, like, make them put trigger guard locks yep. on all the things. Yep, I think it's perfectly fine. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I told you to get your, uh, get your goddamn Fortnite out of, or, <laughs> yeah, get your Fortnite out of my nerf. Yeah, the, uh, the, the nerf announcement, they showed off more of the line of the McFarlane toys. Oh, cool. And then they've also got the full wave of the Funko Pops about to happen. They've got official merch all over the internet now. Yep. Plus all sorts of bootleg merch. I'm sure all sorts of bootleg merch. Hell, even like two of the you know better known streamers for Fortnite, you know, Ninja and Dr. Lupo did a cross promotion to advertise a fucking Hershey's like candy bar. Really? So there's a Hershey's bar with Reese's pieces in it now. Okay. That was that they use those two guys, you know, cuz they they they're friends, they play a lot together. They had other cross promotion stuff for uh, the Guardian Con earlier this year. Where they like collectively between the two of them raised about like five hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand dollars. Oh right, right. So yeah, they they they've been used a few different times as marketing. That's cool. Good so yeah, now guys. now they've hit like e like you know Ninja was on the fucking Ellen show two days in a row. Huh. And now like. He's also advertising Red Bull candy bars for Hershey's. They just had at TwitchCon the Dorito Bowl, which was a competitive tournament between a lot of big streamers uh, for Call of Duty Black Ops. <laughs> like, like, man, the, the, the culture of Fortnite exploding and then expanding into other games now. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, wild, it's lifted up the entire gaming community. Absolutely. Made it all more mainstream. Yeah, I, I'm okay with all of it. And like I said, I'm I'm right up yeah. there with all those old guys that are like, I don't like Fortnite. I just I, rather not play the game. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm I'm uh, I'm also with the like. What, why are all you guys so fucking angry? <laughs> it's just yeah. a game. Go play something else, you assholes. Yeah. Hey, don't don't. It's like the meme of. Like the guy standing behind his buddies playing a game. It's like stick figure drawings. He's like, you know, they uh, the server is trash. They uh, have microtransactions. And he starts yelling at him in the final page. Stop having fun. <laughs> yeah. Like that's essentially all I hear is people wanting other people to not have fun. Pretty much. Kind of like when you talk shit about Destiny. Well, no. <laughs> My issue is that. Bungie is highly abusive of their audience and their audience Not is Not anymore. Because what, no, I mean, what we're going to talk about today is the Festival of the Lost. Okay. Because <laughs> I played a shitload of Destiny this week. Um, yeah, so the, the Festival of the Lost is our Halloween event. 
and it's pretty much a 15 minute so what when the infinite forest came out just to backtrack a little which was the first dlc infinite forest kind of indicates like oh it's going to be like a replayable you know diablo style dungeon crawler thing no <laughs> it's not nope so bungie heard loud and clear that we were pissed about that so this Haunted Forest mode is the Infinite Forest that we should have originally got. It is a randomly generated dungeon crawler. But it's pitch black. <laughs> to kind of match the Halloween thing. Um, so you go through it. You have 15 minutes. You have to kill a bunch of enemies to get 100% of the branch cleared. And then you have to fight a boss. And then it does, it does pause the timer so that you have a minute to kind of regroup. And then you go and you activate the next wave. You try and complete as many waves in that 15 minutes as you can. And then once you get to the end, there's a chest. You open it up and you get a bunch of, uh, oh, what are they called? They're called some kind of souls or something. And then you, get, you can turn those in for the uh, Thessal Lost Masks. And those actually, when you upgrade them, help you in the, uh, the, the Dark Forest, the Haunted Forest even. And then you just kind of keep doing that. You can actually take the mass into the rest of the world and do like uh, the. Uh, help me out here, Bob. <laughs> Fuck, the little dungeons in the world. And just do a yeah, crucible okay. and gambit and all that stuff. You get benefits, or you, you're completing bounties from wearing the mask. And they're encouraging you to do a variety of things, which is really good. That's how it should be. Then they added stuff like this, the Nine Live show, which I haven't got, so I'm kind of pissed. Because I'm kind of done with Festival of the Lost at this point, because I've done so much. <laughs> well, then there's still more you want. Yeah, but it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I'm sure like Fortnite, you could grind and get everything, but I'm just not that type of person. I grinded and got uh, the uh, Horror Story, which was a level 600, or rather, light level 600 year two version of origin story from year one uh but it's master worked and it has uh, a new perk on it that's really good so i just grinded to get that that's really all i wanted i might i see i i could play tonight <laughs> and, and finish because i i only need to do a few more bounties and i can get the uh lord shacks mask but yeah i don't know because I still got to edit the podcast and everything. So we'll see if I got the energy to do it tonight because I still got to work tomorrow. <laughs> so here's a horror story rifle, actually. I'll go back to that. Go back, video. And it's a really good looking rifle. It's got a really cool design on it. It has Rampage, which is a, a perk that you know, when you kill something, it increases your damage up to three times. But then Zen Moment, uh, I think it makes, your, uh, it makes your rifle more stable the more damage you do. So that wasn't on the original rifle. And of course this one's master worked. So it, it's a really good rifle. Um, I think that's about it I've done this week. I've just did a bunch of Festival of the Lost stuff. I, I, I'm i loving Destiny more and more. Like now that there's more stuff to do. You know, I haven't really done the Dreaming City. Just because I'm doing everything else. But I don't feel like I'm missing out on the Dreaming City. Uh, one of these times when this, the three week recycle reset goes off, I'm gonna get back into that. But they've uh, they've listened, so stop talking shit about Bungie. <laughs> <laughs> and supposedly they're listening because fucking news about Destiny Three is already coming out. Yeah, I saw some Destiny Three rumor stuff like yesterday. I want to say, and Which, I'm like, really. I know people are getting mad, but I also, like, it's not like Bungie's like, hey, do you guys want to know about Destiny 3? It's not. It's some fucking random dude on Reddit. And yeah, he yeah. has been right before, but it's not like Bungie's coming out and saying, get ready for Destiny 3. Because I hope, I kind of hope they're not. <laughs> In a way. Yeah, like, that's one of those things where, like, I know I could never succeed you know, and and make it big time on a platform like YouTube is because like I am so against speculation 
Yeah. Speculation always leads to disappointment. Oh, dude, that we have an entire like two hour podcast of our wrestling podcast talking about that because that shit's really bad in wrestling. All kinds of speculation, and it's it's just very aggravating because yeah, there's all this stuff about Destiny Three. Like, there's gonna be really heavy RPG elements. Well, now you know if it if it turns out that there's not, people are gonna be mad. But it's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. Fucking Bungie said. Yeah, the outrage based on rumor speculation. Yeah. Like how how quickly that escalates out of control. And, and, and it that... happens in wrestling constantly. <laughs> you know, it'll be like, oh, so and so's coming back tonight. It's confirmed. Yeah, by like everybody but the WWE, and then it doesn't happen, and people are mad. It's like, why are you mad? No one told you you were gonna get that. Oh, I heard that I was going to get $1,000 tonight. I'm pissed I didn't get that $1,000. Yeah, it makes me think of a guy I worked with for a little bit before he left the job I work at. He was talking about, you know, when the first trailer, I want to say, for Red Dead 2 came out, he was like, yeah, but I'm worried it's not going to have, like, a real single player because look at what they've done at GTA. Like, shut your fucking mouth right now. Nobody said anything legitimate. You're reading shit people are making up for fun on the internet. Yeah. Just shut the fuck up. They'll show you what it is. Make your decision based on that. Move on. Like, <laughs> don't spend the next eight months, because it was like, literally like eight months before there was any like solid details you could confirm about Red Dead from that first trailer. Yeah. <laughs> before, I was just like, why are you going to sit here and let this fester in you? Because it's never going to be what you want now. Because right. you've let yourself, you know, go out of hand. It's kind of why, like, personally for me, I've talked to this about a lot of people. It's like, fuck. It's like, not only do I not care about spoilers, I encourage you give me spoilers. Just because I enjoy things more the mm. second time I go through it. So if you've right. already, like, also, I don't put all the importance on the moment of the thing. Like, like... It's like when OG, spoiler, you know, Sixth Sense, you know, Bruce Willis is dead the entire movie. What? <laughs> so, like, the amount of people that would get so mad back when that movie first came out and people would be talking about it, I was like, hey, man, this movie's like two years old now at this point. Like, you could have yeah. watched this at any time. Don't, don't get mad at me now because I mentioned it. It's like, the movie is so much better than the moment people want to make and spoil. It's like... Right. <laughs> it's like so many people have put so much focus now on spoiler culture. I That word makes me angry to say. Spoiler culture. Spoiler. If you're not talking about fucking assholes with Nissans, then... <laughs> <laughs> then I'm already mad. I, I feel like spoilers are like... Especially for a movie, it's like once it's out of theaters then we can talk about whatever. And if well, you don't like, want to hear me, it, then like, leave. Like, to me personally, it's like, fuck, if it's, it hasn't even hit theaters yet and you saw a screening, fuck, go ahead and tell me. Because if it's actually a good product, it's actually well made, there's going to be so much more enjoyment you will then see right. at the path of how they got there. It's like, yeah, I mean, what? I've there's never been a spoiler to anything... In fucking 20 years, it's really, like, thrown me for a loop. Like, one of the... Here, okay. Here goes a deep cut. Okay. Here's here's a random game. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm ready. So, fuck. What is the name of it? Uh, let's see. That was... Gears of War clones. It was a 360 game. PS3 it... era. Is it the ter the terrain changing one? Not the terrain changing one. Not the not fracture. It was the gravity one that was made by like Saber Interactive. The guys who made like times inversion. Inversion. Yeah. Okay. So inversion had an awesome reveal at the end of the game. Of where, like, you start off, you're like these cops in this kind of nice, picturesque town. 
and exactly like Gears of War where the locusts break out of the ground in this game other human beings that look like them break out of the ground and they have this other technology and they start shooting everything up stealing all the women okay <laughs> yeah like it, it's fucking weird and like you go back with your partner to your apartment trying to look for you know your families yada 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 you realize some of the stuff has been ripped off like the game is just mediocre but it like the narrative like the establish of how they go about this was actually insane because you get to the point to where you fight off these enemies you go in these underground tunnels and the deeper you go into ground like it's getting more and more techno technologically advanced all of a sudden there's like tunnels that are lit up and like robots patrolling these tunnels and you're like what the hell is that and then you go further and you see these, like these hubs and these transit systems and you encounter like other places where you exit these tunnels and now there's another society's like living there and you're like okay what the fuck did you finally get to the society of these guys that raided your dome? Right. And it's all like straight up Mad Max. Everything's dead. Like like in their in their dome they had nuclear apocalypse. Like they, they fucked it all up. So now yeah. they're raiding people for food and supplies. So then you exit out, like you're just kinda of still confused, okay, what's going on? Like I keep going underground, like gravity gets weird in certain areas. Thus the name inversion, because there's like weird, like anti grav and zero g like traversal between cover points, <laughs> and then you get to the reveal of where you're walking out into this outer shell area of this building, and you look out, and you realize it's this giant floating platform with eight different domes of eight different societies of eight different like small worlds so it's this giant like experiment in the middle of space Jeez. of these people living in the in these worlds didn't know that they were just essentially like snow globes <laughs> that's kind of terrifying yeah like like it's it was like the fucking insane reveal of the guy walking up to the window and looking out seeing these massive discs that were all their realities and they were all angled away from each other enough to where if they just looked up, they saw space. They never saw each other until, I guess, the destroyed society like blew up enough crap and went down. Yeah. To where they were damaging the actual systems of the spaceship. So did you have that spoiler for you? No. It's just one of those things of, like, of all the spoilers of every game, like The Last of Us, how important, like, this, like I just spoiled the last of us for somebody today at work as we were talking about it like it just happened to come up and they're like wow that's fucking dark and weird now this guy doesn't own a console he's a pc guy yeah and the last of us is like five years old now six years old like he's never gonna play it and i broke the story down to him to the point where he understood like he he got the the impact of it as well as he could with a cliff notes version but anyway, even in those scenarios, like none of that stuff threw me off. Like, like this is one of the only games of where I guess I wasn't paying attention enough because of how like mediocre the game was. To where when it flipped out and I saw that whole reveal, I was like, "Wait, what? What the fuck am I playing again? <laughs> what just happened?" Yeah, and I mean now because of that spoiler, I'm kind of interested. <laughs> yeah, like so that's the thing is like so many things in my life. The only reason I went to them and found the thing I really loved is because someone spoiled it for me yeah. and piqued my interest. Like, there's there's value to being spoiled. Sure. And anyway, so it's, it's the same mentality of speculation culture. <laughs> it's like, people, just, people want that cycle of hype and that interest. They don't really want the product. They want that feeling. And they're like fucking junkies like Tim Gettys. Just chasing that feeling, <laughs> getting that high, and then they're just like bitter, miserable fucks every other time you see them, because <laughs> nothing could live up to their imagination, because everything has a time frame and a budget. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then sometimes you find out, like, Red Dead Redemption 2 is after a post-apocalyptic nuclear holocaust. Yeah, the dolphins <laughs> came back. That's right, the dolphins Since came back. It's the long thanks for the fish. And they came back with nuclear warships from space. <laughs> <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2 is secretly a sequel to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> so yeah, we should go ahead and get into Red Dead Redemption so I'm kind of dying to talk about this game. Uh, so I've only gotten to um, Valentine. Uh, how far are you? So you, this stream is what? Four hours long? Yeah, this is the first part of the entire game. Yeah. And, uh, Which and I, I, uh... I've seen some people talk about how the intro takes too long. Um, I don't agree with that. I no, was... the intro takes as long as it needs to introduce the concept of the camp, introduce the basics, how the game works, show you all the systems. Now, granted, that prologue roughly took me four hours. And I think Some I'm people... still in the prologue. Like, I'm just now taking the girls to Valentine. Yeah, like, you'll, you'll see it transition to chapter two, and that's when you know you're out of the prologue. Gotcha. <laughs> Like, I was like, I, I played for like five hours, and all of a sudden it said chapter two. I was like, Jesus. Like, what have I got myself into? Like, but I, I was off yesterday. I played like 12 hours straight yesterday. I played three hours today. So I'm probably about 20 hours in now after like all my total, total time combined. I'm at like 40%, 38% complete overall for the game. I'm at five. <laughs> Yeah, I'm only at five. You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, I'm just, just paranoid and lost, lost internet. <laughs> I'm just thinking about, like, what a fucking game this is, man. Yeah, so, yeah, I feel like the intro is not... It's long. It's, it's probably longer than most intros, I would say. But yeah. it's okay, because it feels like the first movie in a long series of movies, where they're yeah, kind of like, setting literally... things up. You play through the entirety of the Hateful Eight. As yeah. The prologue of this game, essentially. Dude, the whole time I'm sitting there like, I don't really want to watch Magnificent Seven. Or <laughs> like Hateful Eight, or... Why are yeah. all these fucking movies have numbers in them? Uh, yeah, I, I love it. Like, I love... I think one of my favorite moments has been when you're uh, going to the camp with... Um, what's his name? Hosea? Hosea, the older guy, yeah, when, shaven. when they're just just kind of chatting, I love that stuff. But it did. I would say the only aggravating thing so far in the intro has been, and it was really bad in that part, the long bits of silence. And they just kind of right in the slow way, and yeah, that feels like it could have been cut out. Well, also something to look forward to. Just heads up to anybody listening to this and just a tip for you is a lot of those moments of silence look over at people and hit the left trigger because sometimes right. there are options to start other conversations that is, as I'm walking around the camp I'm kind of like saying hi to people and that is pretty cool and uh, so what's on the screen now is a little bit further in the intro when you're raiding a, a train there's some pretty interesting stuff on this train I feel like it's setting up. Yeah, this is a giant robber baron, Leviticus Cornwall. Like, you read some of his letters from some of the other businesses he's investing in and rolling things out. He's got a giant armor train just to move his stuff. Yeah. And you look at the in inside of the train, there's like expensive brandies and cigars and like thousands of dollars in like bonds for property. Yeah. And I still haven't hit the point where we found out where we can sell the bonds. Oh, shit. So, okay. Yeah, like, that's a, that's a slow play on that. And it looked like uh, a lot of bonds. Like, that might be a lot of money. Yeah, that's a, that, that was a goddamn stack. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, wow, man. It's just, it's just crazy, like, the world building slowly. Like, yeah. Yeah. But it all and feels the, very deliberate. Like, it doesn't yeah, feel like, like anything's wasted. It's like the psychotic 
dedication to just telling you this exact experience. But I do also feel like I'm becoming buddies with them. Oh yeah, like the the relationships and conversations you come across people naturally in a lot of cases just based on how you've been playing. Like I had a scenario as Arthur where I was doing some hunting, trying to get a hold of certain skins to finish up like a certain upgrade for something. Yeah. Because you can go to your camp and drop off certain skins Yep. to have upgrades for your camp. You can go to Trappers, sell them the skins, and they'll have those skins in stock for you to be able to buy like other upgrades. Like I've got a legendary bear hood I turned in and I can pay the guy 40 bucks to make me a giant like ripped up bear hat. Like It's, it's like the bear's nice. head is a hat. And there's other stuff like that. There's one called the Death Roll. It's a whole outfit where it's parts from alligators. Huh. Uh, there's one called the Rattler. You know, it's made out of snake skin. All these different, like, specific de- devices and but, outfits that are based on the animals right. you hunt. But also, so, like, I had a moment of, I was going through the outfits, and I was like, oh, these don't have perks. They're just winter or summer clothing. That's kind, yeah. of, that's kind of dumb. Wait. Nope, that's how that would work. That's actually kind yeah. of cool. <laughs> so, yeah, like, you can store a winter outfit in your horse. Yeah. If you head up north, you can go back to your horse, swap out to the warm clothes, because if you stay too cold for too long, your health and stamina cores drain faster. Or if you're too hot, like, if you keep wearing the winter clothes as you go back down in, like, the south and, like, the swamp yeah. areas... Then you start overheating, and the same things happen. So it it gives you the option to keep other outfits, up to three outfits, I want to say, on your horse. Yeah, I think it's, it's but, three uh, hats. I know that. But yeah, with the the thing about the hunting is I had been hunting a lot of time. Now, I was selling the meat. I was selling the animal carcasses. I was selling the pelts. I was just grinding through some of these things because I was in an area where a lot of animals were. But I have to go back to the camp for a different mission. And one of the ladies I walked up to, I saw her as like a little tick mark, like one of the little white side objective markers. Right. And I went over and she said, go ahead and sit down, Arthur, let's just have a talk. And I started talking to the lady. And Arthur just kind of has like this, you know, emotional breakdown almost. In the middle of this conversation, he's like, I, I just don't know what I'm doing. I mean, this situation we're in is bad and I don't, I don't know what the future's like, and I'm worried about myself. I've just been killing animals for no reason. <laughs> like, he has this whole, like, crisis of conscience of just hunting all these animals, just organically, because that's what I've been doing for huh. the past, like, half hour of me actually playing the game, was because you can only carry so much meat. So I was leaving a lot of dead bodies of animals out in the woods and wasting, you know, a lot oh, of stuff. Right. It, I took the parts, you know, I took the pelts, but I couldn't take everything because I can only put yeah. one carcass on the back of your horse. I uh, I had kind of a funny moment in this scene right here with the train, and you can either let the guys go or kill them. I, uh, I accidentally hit the button that, like, told them to get back on the train, and I was like, hey, you know what, fuck it, these guys, they're going to get us in trouble. So I shot one, and the other two split off, and I lost them. And I was just like, <laughs> shit! I hope that doesn't bite me in the ass. Bing! Certain decisions you make in the world. <laughs> I was like, god damn it! <laughs> but yeah, but man. I, I hope that some at some point that does bite me in the ass. And then like when we were going up to the town, there's the guy. He's like, hey, can you help me with my horse? And I was like, no. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, it, it just... I, this is one of those games where I'm going to play it how I would interact in that com- in that situation. Like, yeah, there's you got I got these girls in the back. I got this old guy, and there's just this random scary looking dude that's like, "Can you help me?" I'm like, no, creep, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> that's how I would be in real life. It's like, hey, you look like you just raped a stick of butter. Please yeah. leave me alone, sir. <laughs> it's like this is the only thing you found out in the woods for the past eight months. You're lonely, and you look like you have a gun. <laughs> Please leave me alone. 
And but, actually, uh, uh, there's the guy who recognizes you in town, and yeah. I chased him down. And this is so far the only problem I've had with the game. We got to the cliff. I decided I was gonna kill him. Stepped on his feet, and then Arthur just decided to jump off the fucking cliff. <laughs> And then for whatever reason, the game just wouldn't load back up. I sat there for 10 minutes, and it just kept loading. And uh, I had to quit out the game, and I was back at the camp, and I hadn't even started that mission yet. So I got to redo that whole thing of, like, saving the girls and everything. Yeah, I, I've kept a, a good habit of every now and then when I actually do something of worth to make a hard save. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's easy to screw up everything. Like, in this... In this case, I let those guys live. I just told them, hey, you boys don't want none of this. <laughs> they sent yeah. them on their way. I but yeah, man. Because like, they're just like guys that were inside the armored car. They weren't even armed. Like, they were just the paper pushers, those guys. So maybe, maybe they'll be nicer. Maybe, but probably I, uh, not. I don't trust them fuckers. <laughs> like, I've already come across a, a handful of certain scenarios of what I had done, like, paying off or having a negative effect. Mm -hmm. Like, one of the obvious ones is kind of like a semi-repeating, like, ambient experience. Mm -hmm. Is you come across a person that's, uh, like, been bit by a snake. Okay. And you can, like, suck the poison out. Ooh. Or give them, like, a cure, like one of your, like, health potions to help them get over the, the venom. And then you'll occasionally run into those people, like, you'll see them one more time afterwards, like, in town near a store. Oh, okay. And they'll buy you any one item in the store. Huh. That's um, pretty cool. Like, I randomly helped a guy. I was going through the outside woods. He had his leg caught in a bear trap. And I think I saw that guy again in a different town pretty close mm -hmm. to those woods. Like like the next day I was playing. And the guy that I thought may have been that dude was limping. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> because, because he had his like leg smashed. He didn't say anything, but I didn't get close enough to him to like cause any kind of interaction. Hmm. But, uh... Yeah, man, there, there, there's, there's been a few of the things that kind of get spoilery I've come across already. Uh, some of the story missions, though, like, have led to, like, a, a minor gripe of mine about, like, it was a problem in the first Red Dead, and it's still kind of a problem in this Red Dead, is the, the bandana covering your face. Yeah. Is, like, sometimes that just doesn't work for story reasons. Oh. So, like, certain missions you're going to do that you're just going to end up with a bounty and you're going to be a scumbag. Right. Now, I figured out doing a mission for this guy, Micah, like, he gets arrested in this town and I go and I break him out. But he's got to, you know, make a pit stop, grab his guns. Because, mm -hmm. like, the guy he got in a fight in this bar after he got arrested, like, took his guns. And that's the only thing he cares about. So I'm rolling through this small town out in the middle of the mountains, killing literally everybody with this fuck because he wants his guns back. And after the end of the mission, I realized, like, I put on my mask, but I left that area and had a $300 bounty. I was like, no! Oh, shit. That is an insane amount of money. So I had hard saved. And I realized for the story mission, unless I paid attention, like, every time it hit, like, a cutscene, Arthur took his mask back off. Oh. So, like, but best case scenario of putting the mask back on every single time before anything happened, for anybody yeah. knew I was a, a creep that was about to murder everybody, like, I got my bounty down to $85, which is still a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But I did destroy, like, literally an entire town's worth of people. Right. <laughs> but yeah, man, so there's also another mission I've come across where another kind of job happens and you just have a bounty like you can't skip it but that one was to teach you about how the bounties work okay so you go to a post office you pay off your bounties for any areas you've still got story wise the entire area around Blackwater is locked down because you start off the game escaping from a heist that went bad at Blackwater 
Right. So there's a point way down the line, I guess, in the story from where I'm at, where I guess you end up heading back to Blackwater. I think that's how Mexico was in the first one. Yeah, well, Mexico is that whole scenario of you're looking for Javier Escuela. Yeah. And you realize he had scooted, Bill Williamson had scooted down to go hang out with his buddy Javier. Yeah, I did, uh, I went back and watched, like, a recap of the first game. And I, like, actually, I started it, I started the Red Dead 2, and then I think they mentioned Javier, and I was like, I think he's for the first game. I'm not sure, though. So I went and watched that video, because it's been, it's been years since I played Red Dead 1. I didn't replay it before this. Yeah, Um, I had just finished it, like, a month before the game came out. Yeah. But I, I love that, and I, I didn't even realize, I'm glad, I would have realized this, but I'm glad I watched that video, because uh, I got to see John from the first game, and, like, one of the first sequences of the game, they're walking around looking for John, 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 Marston, and I was like, oh shit, it's John Marston! <laughs> I don't know why it didn't occur to me that he'd be there. But yeah, that I think that's really cool that John is there and seemingly like a passive part of the game. And yeah, he's just part of the group. Yeah, and to get to see his growth, hopefully, that that's pretty damn cool. But to see the cut on his cheek, and like, oh, that's how he got that. And then the guy jokes like, "We're gonna have to come up with a better story." <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh shit. And even just Abigail being there. And I think his son was at the beginning. Yeah, his it little must son have been. Jack. Yeah, yeah. You basically come across, you know, old John Marson, who's just a fucking scumbag dad. Yeah. Like they talk about, like how before the events at Blackwater that happened right before this game starts off, like John had left the gang for like a year after his son was born. Oh, okay. Like he he just fucking up and ditched everybody. And finally came back, I guess. He came to his senses. So, yeah, he's kind of like just a shitty scumbag dad. Right. And I guess through the course of this, like, maybe he comes to a realization leading to why, you know, whatever breaks the gang apart to lead to, you know, Red Dead, the first Red Dead. You know, yeah. But you'll, even, you'll see some of that. Even, like, I was saying, how Jose is a character I really like, and Charles as well. The, uh, the half black, half Indian guy who teaches you how to hunt. And then, you know, you're on this wagon just chatting with him about his life and stuff. And you're finding out little details about, like, what happened in Blackwater. And it, it, I love the intro. I can't wait to get into the world to play more. Yeah. Because there's more and more of that. Like, it layers on layers. Like, I cannot recommend anybody enough to regularly go back to the camp. Because new situations yeah. will happen, new little bits of character between those people will happen, like interactions between people in the camp, interactions with those people you might run into in a town between the people in that town, people remembering you from shit you did, you know, in that town previously, like in part of the prologue, like you said, you just got to Valentine, and as part of one of the trailers, uh, is the bar fight. You get into a bar fight, you know right before you have to chase the guy that recognized you. And every time you go back to town, if you go into that bar, the bartender's like, hey, now, I don't want no trouble. He's like, I was just offending myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of that where, you know, sh- shopkeepers you go to recognize you. And if you've been there within the past day or so, say, hey, welcome back. But if it's been like two or three days, four days, up to a week or more within game time that you've been there, it's like, I haven't seen you around these parts in a while, fella. Like, huh. like they recognize the amount of time it's been since the last time you've been through there. It, like, the the low-level amounts of detail. Oh, yeah, and that's, I mean... That are we're... psychotic. Like, really, like, the fact that you run people's pockets. When you kill a body, you loot it. You see Arthur reach down, pick them up, turn them over, and put his hands yeah. through all their pockets and their coats and steal all their shit. <laughs> I think, you know, you broke it down a couple episodes ago about how 
Rockstar just here's a little thing we came up with for this Grand Theft Auto, and then the next game they kind of expand it. And I think in Grand Theft Auto V, there was that crazy attention to detail. They even released a trailer showing all the crazy shit that's just detailed in that game. And then yeah. now we're seeing that in a bigger way here. Yeah, because they had, you know, the three different endings for GTA V. They had, you know, different strangers and freaks, you know, like the random people you come across. Some Some of those people you don't encounter if you made the wrong decision in one mission versus another. Mm-hmm. Like, one of the examples that was really cool in GTA 4 is, like, there are these two different, you know, black guys that are part of these gangs. And if you help the one guy out, the guy you probably should help out, you know, like, narrative-wise, yeah, like, he gives you a whole different, you know, setup of how he interacts with things and you know all of all of the people you had on your phone that were your compatriots in GTA 4 did a different thing if you called them. <laughs> like there was, you know, a bad man, the guy with the the gun truck that would show up, like right. the Jamaican guy that showed up with guns. Right. And then there's Packy, the Irish guy you could call, and he, you know, literally drop off a bomb you could load in the cars and make car bombs. <laughs> like, but with the the two rap guys or the gangster guys i forget exactly I if you I if you talking about yeah if you save the other guy that was kind of like the 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 shithead in that situation that guy was the leader of like a, a a chunk of his gang if you called him he would send he'd show up with like two other npcs in his car <laughs> and he'd have like a small like four man army in a ride to carry them in so you'd have random AI helpers yeah. until they died or you dismissed like the guy in the lead gang. So they they've had small changes, you know, affect in game and mid game stuff. But yeah, they've just gone to that next level of like I can just walk up to a guy and if I think he had a cool watch or whatever, I can look at him hit antagonize, start talking shit to the guy, and the guy pulls a gun, and I gun him down <laughs> in self-defense. Right. And then I loot his body <laughs> and move on. Like, I, I can I can escalate situations or talk people out of situations. Yeah, I'm really curious where some of these things are gonna go. Like, with the gang. The gang is so interesting. The cook is interesting. I don't know what the fuck is the deal with Herr Strauss. <laughs> yeah, Strauss is just this crazy German guy who's a money lender. Like, like, what is he doing in this gang? Like, this is weird. I thought, well, that's what this whole gang is. Like, why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here? Yeah. But I think it's, it's Dutch's, he's a cult of personality. I'm really excited to see where that goes. Yeah, like, I just earlier, while I was playing today... I went back to the camp. It had been the first time I've been back to camp in a bit. Mm-hmm. And that was when I realized, like, shortly after I left that I was underweight because I hadn't been, like, actually eating food. I'd just been, like, using certain things to get my cores back up. Right. But I hadn't actually stopped and ate food. So I started to lose weight, and I was wondering why, like, my health and stamina were deteriorating so way faster your, than they should. Right. Was your heart and your stamina, was they were they actually starting to empty? Like the, they, the they, middle bit, the the core part, the yeah, the the big the big circle, like they were permanently stuck at like just a tiny part, like removed until I started eating again and I I gained some weight back and I was gotcha. healthy again. But I stepped into the camp for something, and it was this lady Susan who's kind of like the head head lady in the camp. She's, She's the mom. She's she's well she's also I do believe the madam. She's kind of like the head of the the ladies of the evening. Oh sure. I'm sure. Cuz pretty much all the ladies in this camp have slept with people for money. <laughs> but uh and that's also, you know, apparent with Abigail. And that was kind of a point of contention in Red Dead Redemption was first time you run to Dutch and he figures out while you're chasing him he's like you know, every one of us had Abigail. You're just one that just kept her. Like, huh. So you you come across an argument in this camp of basically Abigail saying, hey, like, 
I'm not gonna fuck dudes for money anymore. I'll figure out something else. Like I'm done with that life. Right. And Susan is like, Hey, everybody's gotta earn their keep, lady. And that's, you know, a, a strong point of that character that she's sticking to it. She she's married now, she has a kid. She's trying to get her shit together and change. And it kinda infects John, as you see with the whole plot of Red Dead Redemption. Right. And you see Arthur, for all the missions you come across where you're kind of forced into being an absolute scumbag, like I came across that random conversation that I could have potentially missed entirely since it was like a side quest if I just happened to find at the camp at that time of him breaking down about, like, you know, being confused, being lost. Like, he doesn't know why he's killing all these animals. Mm Mm-hmm. There's so many little details of these interactions between these people you miss. Yeah, I think that's kind of, in a weird way, a big part of the game. Is going to be, you know, I'm sure next week when we do the podcast we're going to talk more about it. And me and you could go through a mission, you know, the exact same mission and it would be totally different in different ways. Or, you know, like you hear an interaction that I've never heard. Or this happened in town that never happened to me and... That's going to be the fun of this game, is all the different stuff that can happen. Yeah, because I had two different scenarios. I just remembered randomly at the beginning of the podcast about touching men and (laughs) being held in the basement. Right. Anyway, there's a small town I got to as I was traveling. I think I was doing a bounty hunt. And I headed, headed down, I came across this town called Rhodes. And it's just kind of this, like, dirt poor, like, dirty, middle of nowhere town that, like, it was doing all right, and then whatever happened, most of the money left the town, so now it's just, like, it's it's a haven of scumbags. Mm-hmm. To the point where even the homeless veteran guy I gave money to and talked to, he's like, yeah, buddy, I hate everybody in this town, you should go ahead and get out of here as soon as you can. But I walked up, I was hit the general store, did my business there, sold some stuff, was about to head across the street because I saw there was a gun store. I was going to go to the gunsmith. And as I start to cross the street and get over to the gunsmith, I see a guy standing on the side of the building looking down. Like, that's weird. And then all of a sudden I just hear a person yell, help me, mister. You gotta help me. Help me. And I see hands flailing out from, like, the vent. Oh, God. Like the bars of the window of the basement of the gunsmith. And I'm like, that's fucking weird. (laughs) And then I go over, because the the stranger he was yelling at originally said, I want no part of that. That's too weird for my part. So this guy that I saw interacting with the person in the basement walked off. So then I go over and I look down, and it's like a younger guy in like a little like sailor boy haircut and a sailor outfit. Like... (laughs) Like dressed in little boy clothes, <laughs> and he's like, "the the man's got me chained up to the bed. <laughs> he thinks I'm his son. Let me help me, Smister." So oh, this God. guy's like being held captive in the basement of this gunsmith, and you, it's your choice how you want to go about that. So I walk to the gunsmith, and I talk to him, and when I look at him for the context menu, I just have the regular gunsmith options. And the door to the basement is locked. So then I think, okay, I guess I got to rob the guy, pull out a gun on him. So then once I pulled the gun out, it gave me the option to say empty the cash register or open the basement. So then I open the basement and he walks down there. He's like, ah, nothing down here. Just my son. You know, he's asleep. You should probably come back when he's awake. And you get down there and the guy is like nervous about the thing as I'm slowly walking him down the stairs into the basement and you see the guy just like trapped there's like little kid drawings like 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 the little sketches you'd see a little kid make with like charcoal right. on an old piece of canvas back in the west since they don't have crayola and paper you know and I was just sitting here like I, I guess when I first did it like the next line of dialogue I didn't queue up somehow and the pawn, the gunsmith owner just like wasn't responding. He was just like cowering because pointing a gun at him. 
So I said, all right, let me get this kid out of here since I didn't know what to do. I hard saved before I walked in the store, so I knew whatever happens, I got a I gotta go back button if I want yeah. to. So then I pull out the uh, the rope and I hog tie the gunsmith on it. But for whatever reason, I can't hog tie him. I can't hit the button to tie him up. Yeah. So then I let go of it and he stands up and he pulls his gun and he starts to shoot me. So I just shoot him in the head. And the kid, the 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 guy who's like chained up, he's like, just shoot the chain, mister. So I lean over and I shoot the chain and he walks out and I start looting the place. And then I get a bounty on my head because somebody heard the gunshot, started to walk in, and he sees me behind the cash register, yeah. like <laughs> stealing all the money. I'm like, ah, damn it, I don't want it to end like that. Let me see if there's another option here. So then I reload, go back in. I know I can go to the basement, put my mask on this time just to be safe so I can hide my bounty, walking down the stairs, and then a dark, weird situation gets darker once I cue the next part of the conversation. Yeah. So I figure out I had to look back at the gunsmith and hit square to question him, and then he start, starts talking about it. He's like, you know, I lost my boy. I was down at the river teaching him how to hold a rifle and and the recoil it just threw him he fell in the river and I lost him so fast <laughs> so this is just a sad man who saw somebody who would be about the age his son would be if he was still alive he just abducted this guy and made him wear his dead son's clothes because he felt guilty about losing his son <laughs> and this is just a whole scenario I could have avoided I could have just walked in, did my business at the store, and left that guy alone and never learned any of this. But yeah, I let the guy out and he leaves. And you know, the the gunsmith owner, he's still cool. Like like he's his his intro to the conversation and the next time I walked in there was like he sounded like super fucking awkward to be having a conversation with me at that time. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> But, uh, you know, he's still in business and not dead. And then now I have this whole weird experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like Rockstar is, like, at another level. Like, I feel like they're, like, a quadruple A publisher. Well, this game took literally eight years. Yeah. A and the Maybe majority Grand Theft of... Grand Theft Auto Five. Well, Grand Theft Auto Five is about five years. Yeah. And well, GTA or Rocks, or Red Dead, this Red Dead, took like almost eight years, and then about a third of the way through the project, the majority of the Rockstar Studios were working on this. Yeah, there was like something like twelve hundred people working on this game at one point. It just seems like they're on another level from even like Bethesda or Activision or well, anybody. Well, this is this is the benefit of a pro property like Grand Theft Auto V selling as well as it did and then yeah. also permanently monetizable like GTA Online has been. This is kind of what I hope the future of Epic turns out to be is now that they they were always you know fairly successful now they've hit next level of success and they have other businesses investing. Like having the ability the comfort of time and money for a project is is insane it leads to absolute confidence in whatever this company makes and it shows in every one of their products mm -hmm. now i'm trying to find uh how much red dead is sold already but it's all uk sales yeah because uh, the uk sales people report by the week mm, the okay. the npds report monthly so we're not going to see the npds for this until like I think the second week of November hmm. which this game would have only been on sale for five days yeah in that month yeah I and guess I thought that it came out a little quicker than that yeah yeah they, they do weekly reportings in the UK which is where so many of the stories about this is the fastest selling game in this franchise's history yeah come from is because they have those weekly reports in the UK and they're a, a fairly representative market, apparently. Oh, sure. 
Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see how well this game does because it, I think it just probably gonna do extremely well. Because you know, the crazy thing do. is, is like the further I've gotten into this game and I've seen like the layer of interaction between all the items, mm -hmm. it makes me really curious as to what you know Red Dead Online is gonna look like. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know because if it's, I can't imagine it's just going to be team deathmatch and stuff. It's going to be something crazy. Well, because if the first Red Dead, most of their stuff was just cooperative items. Like nobody really played the PvP mode that much. I heard it was really good though. I knew a few it, people it, who really liked it. It was cool cuz you just randomly went out into the wild. It was like a lobby of like 16 people, I want to say maybe, 8 people. And you could have posses and roll around, and if you did some shenanigans and broke the law a lot, a bounty would show up on your posse's head. And then the other team, if they were in your instance, could, you know, ride over and try to find you and gun you down to get the bounty. Mm -hmm. Kind of what they did in, you know, all of GTA Online. And like then a there were actual like modes, too. Yeah, there were, there were actual game modes of... But the most things people really played were just a ride around in the open world. I remember Red Dead Revolver had a really good multiplayer. At least I remember it being really good. <laughs> the only thing I ever really did with the Red Dead Revolver multiplayer was the one-on-one -on -one or four-player duels. Yeah, that's what it was. It was like a showdown arena mode. But like, there was like a cover base like four person yeah. arena game mode as well. But you had all those goofy characters like the dude with the you know the cannon arm and stuff like Yeah. That game And the guy with the dynamite crown who yeah. was a character you unlock in Red Dead Online. I wish a little bit more of that stuff would creep into these games. <laughs> yeah. Just well the there's already some like weird Easter eggs people have found. Uh like I came across some weird they're apparently called the Night Folk. Uh, in the, the Louisiana analog, down by St. Denis, where it's all swamps and gators, I came across this lynched body out in the woods. I was just riding along, and I just see this white guy with his hands bound behind his back, hanging dead from a tree. Oh, God. And I look at it, and I was like, that's weird. So I go over there, and I get near the body, and I look at it. I can't loot it while it's hanging. So I pull up my gun, and I shoot the rope, and the body drops. And as I reach down to loot the body, all of a sudden I see three red dots on my mini-map. And I turn around, and there's these fucking voodoo-ass white guys with, like, mud and weird tribal paint on their faces with knives. No, nope, fuck kill me. that! No! Nope. And they're trying to kill me with <laughs> knives. Like, they disappeared out of nowhere. It's like, what the fuck? Hey, I'm, so done, I, I'm done playing Red Dead 2. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what the shit was that? And I, and I fight those guys off and come to find out, like, as I get further in the area, like, that's just like a common thing. Like, I hope the knife will get you. You some bitch. Like, like, I kept, I caught a bounty in that area. And this this guy with this heavy, like, Louisiana style accent. Like, I hope the knife will curse you, boy. You gonna die. Like, <laughs> And then I've also seen a clip of somebody going into like this this greenhouse kind of area out in the woods at night. And as he's walking inside the building looking for loot, all of a sudden, like, the room lights up green from above. And he looks and he sees like a floating point of light. And the floating point of light flies off straight up in the sky and flies away. Huh. I was like, Are there fucking aliens in this game? Like what? Sure. Because I I've talked before. Uh, last time we were talking about the original Red Dead when I was replaying that, about the undead nightmare and like the the Yeti hunting, like the Sasquatch yeah. hunting. And yeah, like they they've touched on all sorts of weird stuff before, and they've already touched on a fair amount of weird stuff I've encountered. Yeah, I've seen some other examples of like crazy bizarre stuff happening. But yeah, the night folk thing scared the fuck out of me. That's why you keep a shotgun on you. <laughs> Just cuz like it, like it startled me. I was like I didn't hear anything. They were like they were like uh Resident Evil 4, the villagers. 
in the first yes. opening part where yeah. they're just walking at you menacingly with melee weapons. Like, I just turn around, there's these guys just slow walking at me with knives out. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was like, what? Like, it just startled me. Like, I wasn't paying attention. All of a sudden, I see three red dots. And I turn around 180, and I see three dudes with knives. And I was like, okay, this is happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now I know if I see that body to just nope the fuck away. <laughs> yeah, because, no, there's also actual lynchings that happen in this game. Yeah, I'm sure. Because people have already run across the, the clan out in the woods in a lot of really? clips I've seen. You see, like, a, a bunch of them, just a bunch of dudes in white hoods hanging out. Out in the forest talking about, you know, like, goddamn government being all nosy in our business. <laughs> I came across a cult, like, right before Yeah. I was, you know, jumping on the podcast. And I was like, all right, there's, there's a weird small cult up on a hill in a mountain. Like, and they're wearing, like, these weird robes with turtles on them. Yeah, there's there's some crazy stuff going on in this game. Yeah, how big is this game's, like, map? Compared, I, compared to, like, Skyrim. Do we know? Compared to, like, Skyrim? Probably yeah. twice as big, three times as big. Good lord. But the thing is, is, like, I was looking at the map earlier, and then I zoomed out, and I realized there's a gigantic chucked chunk of the map that's still grayed out to the bottom left. Like, everything down, like, southwest past Blackwater, I don't know what it is down there. And there's still chunks up in the north and the northeast that I haven't been to yet. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, right. like there's so much more here. I'm trying to find if anyone has, like, a comparison of the map. Yeah, I think there is a, a complete map visible... But just judging by the uh, the length of time it takes me riding a horse to go from mm -hmm. point A to point B, uh, I do love the cinematic mode. Yes, that is really cool. I also love that it's kind of like your auto run. Yeah. So like if you if you get on the path, say you set a a destination, you get on the path and you get up to speed. If you then transition in a cinematic mode your horse will follow the path automatically. Yeah, but you still have to hold the button, which is kind of annoying. No, you don't. Really? I yeah, thought like too. If you're, well, if you're on the actual path, like if you're not yeah, on a path yet, like 99% of the time it's worked for me where I just let go. Because there was a time where I, like I was playing it yesterday when I did like the 12 hours straight where I was trying to like set my phone back up for something. I was looking down at my phone, and all of a sudden I hear a bear, and I'm like, okay, okay, let's look back up. <laughs> Pick up the controller. Uh, that's the worst sound to hear if the controller's not in your hand. is a goddamn bear. <laughs> and thankfully, you know, the bear was not after me, and I was able to just keep moving on. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe because, and I've tried doing it at the beginning of the game. Maybe it's because I don't have a uh, thing set, a waypoint set. Yeah, if you have a, a waypoint set, they'll follow the GPS marker basically okay. automatically for you. So apparently, you just gotta actually get mm -hmm. on the trail. It takes 16 minutes uh, to go from one corner corner of the map to another. Yeah, <laughs> it's insane. That is pretty damn cool. Oh, yeah, I'm excited to get out in the world and explore. Yeah, because uh, a handy tip is always, especially early game, as you're figuring out how like different buildings and different places of loot happen, mm -hmm. is if you click both the sticks, that does your eagle eye. That's right. how you know you track scents and animal trails while you hunt. Because if you're standing still and you're trying to hunt an animal and you click it, you'll see which way the wind is blowing. You'll see like a little scent trail coming off your body. Yeah. So you know if you're whether or not the wind is blowing your smell towards the animals and how close you can get before they run. But also, like especially if you're inside buildings, it highlights loot on the ground and on shelves. Okay. Um, so that's one of those things that's always really handy to keep up with. Is there's so many small tools and small buttons and systems that it's easy to forget about. 
but if you remember them, they're super, super goddamn handy. Like, yeah. One of the things is, you know, if you hold the pause button, it pulls up your map without having to pause it and go to map. Uh, there's a cinematic mode, you know, being your pretty much like riding a taxi in old school GTAs. Yeah. Like, you just gotta, you can't skip the ride. Uh, also, try to upgrade. Your, the, try to do the actual upgrades for your camp as soon as possible. Yeah, I did watch a uh, like twelve things I wish I knew before I started a Red Dead video. That was one of the things. Yeah, like so much of like the tedium of the camp goes away if you take your first couple of big story missions and you take the money from them. And yeah. Just throw them right into the camp because I I'm at the point now where I've got enough money to finally buy like the upgrade for my lodging mm -hmm. and when I do that it gives you the option to fast travel from the camp to other places okay yeah I'm, I'm a sucker for upgrading camps and stuff anyway so I'm gonna do that yeah cause like one of the upgrades you know is for the food guy to where like he has like some canned goods and other stuff laying around you can pick up and then it also upgrades the quality of the soup he makes yeah so, like, you can go, like, every other day or so, and you'll see, like, the little stew pot as an icon of the camp. You go get a bowl of stew, and it refills all your cores. Okay. Well, it refills your health and stamina. Yeah. If you do the upgrade, it then also refills your dead eye core. Oh. Uh, with the one for your, like, for your lodging, if you upgrade, like, the gun part, like, you go back to the back side of your, where your, where your bed is and where yeah. you shave and everything. There's just stacks and stacks of ammo. And I think you right can just now pay... it's grayed out for me. Yeah, because have you unlocked the ledger yet? No, I don't think so. I walked around looking for it and I couldn't find it. Yeah, there's a story mission. Yeah, I figured. Uh, there's a there's another robbery you do as the crew. And you know you have this chunk of cash now after the mission and you go back and it says we got to donate our cut to the gang and that explains how the ledger works okay and you know that opens up the ability to upgrade stuff so I, I recommend you know play this game exactly how it hits you but if you want to save a lot of tedium you know try to do as many story missions up front and you'll see so much of the world so many options unlocked because getting the fast travel system is going to save so much trouble right but also there's a massive benefit to just still traveling out through the world because you come across so many random encounters you see oh hey that's that animal I need that skin for this upgrade oh yeah. hey that's typically uh, how I play these games like I think Far Cry was really the first one where I started doing that a lot was not fast traveling and just, you know, messing around going to a place. And that's going to be even more so in this because of all the little random events. Yeah, and there's so so much more layers of minor interaction that escalate. And, like, yeah. the sheer, like, level of writing for basic minor crap you come across is insane. Like, the whole, like long form conversations I've had with random strangers that weren't a mission where I just talked to them they said something about the town and then something happened nearby and then they responded to that or like the times I've come across I see a homeless guy who's missing like an arm he's a he's a homeless vet in Valentine and I gave him a dollar he's like man buddy I miss all my friends from the war can I have a hug <laughs> He's like, I used to hug everybody back at the camp. Yo, like to hold men. I was like, Eesh. <laughs> but yeah, like you, you encounter him a few different times, and like your interactions escalate based on whether or not you gave him some money, you gave him a hug. Yeah. Like, this is a thing that goes nowhere but those conversations, those interactions. But there is still this entire like character and backstory to this one random dude. Yeah. For no reason. Like, it's insane. <laughs> like, don't be wrong. There's a whole lot of tedious ass shit in this game. Oh, sure. But 
but this game introduces a pace to where if you fall and you click with that pace, you understand why it's there. And I hope maybe in the future, like what happened with Far Cry 3, they add an update that lets you skip some animations. Yeah. Because, like, I've also encountered the longer I played now, like, how persistent the world is of, like, I killed this guy and his horse over here next to this shack that respawns, like, some O'Driscolls, like, an enemy gang. Mm -hmm. And I went to that area and I found horse bones where I know I killed a guy and shot his horse in the head. Oh, shit. Um, like, if you skin an animal and you have it on the back, like, it'll tell you the longer it's been on there, like, when it's starting to rot and it's starting to lose its value. And if it rots all the way, you know, Arthur just throws it away. So the next time you go back out, that deer carcass you had on the back of your horse, you didn't go to the butcher, go find the trapper to sell it. All of a sudden it's gone now because it was rotting and you oh. couldn't do anything with it. And the body was starting to bloat and flies were starting to go around. I noticed that when I went to the swamp with a deer carcass on the back, like there's a lot of flies in the swamp and the shit because the heat and the flies, it rotted faster than when I was in the north in the cold where there were no bugs and the cold is preserving it longer. Like, <laughs> like that's how like minor these details are, but yeah. that same same bandit camp. I I cleared this place out for story mission. And I went back there and the, those guys had respawned, you know, they took took the spot back. And I just I had started to notice some of these persistent things, but when I went back in there, after I fought all these guys, I went to go loot the place as I always do. And the drawers are still open from the last time I was there. <laughs> Damn. So it was like, oh my god, like one, that's that's like super cool, but two, I'm kind of annoyed now that I just got the loot off of the bodies and nothing yeah. else. Is there anything else about Red Dead we want to talk about? I'm sure we'll talk about it more next week. Oh yeah, there's there's still so much more of this game to see. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of excited to finish up the podcast and go play more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you also played more Blackout this week. Yeah, I uh, I had been playing that pretty heavily, trying to get as much of that in as I could before. It Red looks Dead like started. you're just you're just playing Uncle from Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I was really torn on whether to get Red Dead or get Call of Duty. Because, like, just Blackout looks like so much fun. And I would play multiplayer. But I did end up, you know, obviously getting Red Dead. Yeah, either one of these games is a smart choice. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much in either one of those games. That's there. Now, mm -hmm. granted, uh, Call of Duty has a lot more issues currently, but like the overall experience of what's there and the variety of the things you have. Yeah. Like, I haven't played that much of the multiplayer. Oh, okay, yeah, that so, was going to ask you that. Well, like I said, the regular multiplayer, I played for about two hours at the start before I jumped in Blackout. And I jumped in here and there I noticed early on that the certain respawn based modes a lot of those modes the spawns are very bad and highly abusable. Oh uh, yeah. Like, I think that's the normal Call of Duty thing. Well no these were like excessively bad. Oh okay. For certain game modes it was worse. To where like there were multiple times I came across people uploading like their clips of like what was the best play for that game. Yeah. And then it was a guy killed like two people died, respawned, literally right there behind a rock, made two steps to the left, and then shot the guy who just killed him. Like, like within an eight second respawn Jeez, window. Yeah. <laughs> like, like this guy thought he was safe because he just killed the dude, then the guy steps out again, same dude from behind the rock and guns him down and wins the round. It's like, I what? don't know, I feel like that's always been in Call of Duty. Well, so for certain game modes, you know, like domination, or it's control. They've added control, which is basically a, a different version of domination. Yeah. 
but now there's so many you have so many lives per round so there's a, a cap like like tickets in a goddamn battlefield game yeah so there were certain times where if you held certain points you know that adjusts where the spawns for the enemy are that don't control it to where certain maps in that mode you could literally just if you take these two points if you're like a competent team the other you're just gonna murder every single person on the other team as soon as they spawn basically yeah like it was really bad and they've been making updates regularly like almost daily mm -hmm. to blackout and the multiplayer and zombies like at least four times a week since the game came out i've looked on reddit and Treyarch's made an official like okay what's the patch today post damn and um yeah so they're so they're, they're definitely dedicated to supporting this and there's work being done but i i really like heist i've always loved search and destroy now those are the one life per round game modes yeah. Heist is the, you know, Counter-Strike mode. And Search and Destroy is your old plant bomb, defuse bomb situation. Mm -hmm. I think those are really great. It's just, yeah, I haven't played much of the multiplayer because I've just fallen, like, balls deep in the blackout. Yeah. And I absolutely love it, regardless of the massive, massive problems I have with it. <laughs> And I, I will say, just really quick, because we really don't have to go into it, I did play uh, PUBG on Xbox, and whoo, was that a Yikes. shit show, holy crap. Yeah, like like I mentioned in the Discord after you talked about that, was like, literally I played maybe a month ago, like, yeah. well a month from, like, before Blackout dropped. I, I played when it came out on Xbox, because my brother Yeah, I played it. at launch, because I bought a code, like, for cheap. And then I played again, really, at the 1.0 release. On Xbox? Yeah. It's had 1.0? Yeah, it's been 1.0 for a little bit now. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, what? it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But to be fair, okay, like, I did not know PUBG, that. PUBG on PC is at 1.0 version, like, 39. Yeah, but and it's fine. I, yeah, PUBG Xbox is like a 1.0 version 12 or something. Like, like <laughs> there are different versions of 1.0, essentially. But the the problem that is always going to persist with PUBG is that they took a PC game and made an Xbox version. Yeah. They did not make an Xbox game that happened to be PUBG. That's like the beauty of Fortnite. Is that they built that from the ground up, knowing yeah. it's gonna be on multiple platforms. Yeah, it's just aggravating, and like I said, I really don't want to go into this because we're talking about blackout. It's aggravating that like I played it when it came out, and I was like, oh, it's not that great. But they've got a lot of fucking money in this game; they're gonna fix it. And it's been I don't even know how long, and I, I it was unplayable, and I, I went and played it on mobile, and it was fine. And I, I need to reinstall it on my PC. I really want to play PUBG. I want to play Blackout more just because it looks like it's better. I need to just get Call yeah. of Duty. Well, but, uh, like, I was going to mention PUBG anyway because of, like, Blackout right now is has a, a pretty bad inventory system. Okay. Like, even on PC, it's still pretty bad. But it's it's just slightly worse on consoles. But even then, it's nowhere near the fucking abomination that is trying to loot on PUBG Xbox. Like, yeah, <laughs> PUBG Xbox is absolutely insane trash. PUBG Mobile is great. I yeah. love them. <laughs> I love that. Have you played it on mobile yet? I have not played it on mobile, but I've seen it, and they. I enjoyed it, man. Like, I hate those. Uh, like. I don't know what you'd call it—the touchy, touchy controllers, <laughs> like yeah. on the mobile. I hate that. It's fine in PUBG. Um, yeah. I did have to move. Uh, I, I should have moved it back because I realized why it was there. But above the one analog stick is a shoot button, and I kept moving when I would go forward. I kept hitting the shoot button. Uh, but it was there because 
can't remember why. I think it's just when you're in a certain position, it's better to use that one on the left side. I ended up just stacking the two shoot buttons. But, uh, yeah, I actually, I won a chicken dinner on mobile. Yeah, like, I won two games on PUBG Xbox One. At that launch, it was hideous because the the majority of people winning were just getting in cars and running over everybody in the game. That's probably they, a lot easier. Yeah, it, it was super easy to wait late game, find a car, then run over everybody. Yeah. Uh, to where they nerfed cars and made them way easier to destroy. Huh. This is also a problem with H1Z1 when they released their... Oh, yeah, that game exists. ...console version, <laughs> which... Oddly enough, the console version of H1Z1 works way better than PUBG. Damn. <laughs> and H1Z1 H1... is trash. No, nah, H1Z1 is not trash. It's a it's a fine battle royale, but it's just you can tell it's like the first one. Yeah, it's also like weird that H1Z1 has a different identity because when they made the battle royale mode H1Z1, that was going to be a console version as well. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. They stripped out all of the crafting stuff that had been part of H1Z1 since the start of that game. Right. So now you can't just randomly like strip all your stuff to make armor. It's just a hey, what you find on the map is what you get. Right. And so what are the problems with Blackout? Well, with Blackout, well the the big controversy everybody was complaining about was the fact that uh, the servers are kind of shit. Oh, that's right. They, uh, they're using not so good servers, right? Well, so the thing is, they made an official statement after a lot of different people did breakdowns. There's a guy who runs a YouTube channel called Battle Nonsense. Oh, is that who he's I a, have here? He's a network professional. Yep, I got that. So I was just pulling up. Yeah. He's a network professional that's been doing breakdowns of server performance for a lot of games the past year or two now. And he did a te- he does tests on games betas and he also does tests on release and after certain updates. Like he did a test for PUBG, then he did a test for PUBG after they updated the Unreal Engine mm-hmm. and bumped up to 60 hertz servers cuz PUBG had been at like 20 hertz where Blackout is right now. And it was pretty bad. It was especially bad in PUBG because PUBG is a buggy, like, yeah, scrap together mess. I got to believe that there's a reason why it's at 20, though. Well, they made a report. They made a response to it. Okay. They said, hey, our decisions are based entirely on server stability. Because mm-hmm. I guess, you know, they had a volume of people because Blackout is super interesting to a lot of people. A lot of people like yourself that liked PUBG but are tired of Chinese hackers <laughs> like in every other yeah. game. Like it, it was funny to me at the time when the, the hackers in PUBG just stopped caring and were literally flying cars around the middle of the sky like goddamn Harry Potter and like one tapping everybody with a pistol <laughs> as they were driving. <laughs> but uh yeah, so there's a lot of situations of where, like, I've peaked or I've shot people, and all of a sudden they're, like, super destroyed. Like, out of nowhere. Like, like I, I'm at full armor, level 3 armor, full health, and I peek a guy, and he's got, like, a, a basic gun, mm-hmm. and I only feel two bullets on my screen, and then I look at the kill cam, and he emptied, like, half his clip into me already before like the my my side of the game registered you know two shots that sounds like some old school like online gaming bullshit yeah this super bullet is that term of where the the game registers all the shots and only sends the update you know as it can yeah so then the data transfers over and it's you know behind the times now that happens you know, not all the time, but there are certain scenarios where I've come across it where I just, like, I go to shoot a guy and all of a sudden he skates, like, three feet to the left because the server just caught up with where he was actually moving to. Or, you know, scenarios where I drop early game into a crowded area and the loot hasn't loaded in yet on the floor for me. Right. 
so yeah, like the beta of Blackout and the beta of the multiplayer they had mm-hmm. had, you know, the 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 Blackout's always been at twenty hertz. Like even this guy's, you know, test for the for the beta for Blackout was at like seventeen hertz was like the best average. Wow. Which is which is hideous. Because most of your standard shooter games you play, like Call of Duty and everything else, are at like 30 to 60. 60 is the standard of acceptability. So now the multiplayer beta had the servers run 60. But now, since I'm guessing most of these instances are all running on the same cloud servers, the same farms, the multiplayer is down to 20 hertz as well. So That's everything's not good for down. a game like Call of Duty. Yeah, everything's currently down at a lower point. So going forward, I guess once they make improvements, like they made a statement about improving network performance mm-hmm. and other things like that going forward. And the guy Chris who runs Battle Nonsense, he's like, well, "What does that mean? Do you guys have any like information as to what this would be?" <laughs> So right now, I, I do believe it's still all running at 20 hertz. I do believe, you know, going forward with some of these updates they've been putting out, the last few games I played, you know, there were some, like, mildly fucky scenarios here and there, but overall the experience is stable. Like, would, would you rather either have, like, slightly shit servers or servers that are just completely crashed and you can't play at all? Right. So that was their decision there on toning everything down to reduce strain on the on the servers because I guess you know they they didn't buy up enough space because most most of these companies they don't run their own servers they're licensing right. out off of AWS from Amazon or Azure from Microsoft and a few other massive computer network bot farms that run all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, when I was playing PUBG, I had all three of my games, I was killed by a person that was teleporting. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like it's... It's bad, it's, it's kind of unacceptable, but at least they're aware that it's an issue and they're going to fix it. Yeah, like, like I said, PUBG made a drastic improvement when they updated their internal version of Unreal Engine. Mm-hmm. So that was the thing of, like, PUBG sues you know, PUBG Corp sues Epic, you know, yeah. back for over, like, the Fortnite thing, and then immediately thereafter, they complete their upgrade, because the improvements Fortnite made to the Unreal Engine, hey, now everybody on Unreal Engine 4 can go up to 60 hertz servers, you just gotta update your engine, and update these tools, now a lot of games, that one base software update fucks up the entire game because now they have to manually go back in and patch compatibility for the tools they built that weren't Unreal Engine to work with the stuff that is Unreal Engine. Yeah. So that was the big task for them to get PUBG up to the 60 hertz servers and that helped but they still never solved the cheating problem. Well, that's still a thing of fucking shitty websites like Kotaku calling the PUBG player base racist because they just want China region locked because hey, they're banning like 14 million accounts every month from China of cheaters <laughs> or, or like over the course of a period of time they had banned 14 million cheating accounts from China alone. And people are saying that that's racist? That they and that's to- racist that they just don't want these people in their lobbies. No, well one, like hey I'm playing race. in the United States like them being in China regardless of them cheating they're going to be drastically at a negative performance on their server yeah no one's saying and, we don't want Chinese people we don't want cheaters yeah <laughs> and 99% of the cheaters are from these areas yeah it's so unfortunate please, that just... that area needs to be banned but or not banned but you know region locked but that's apparently how it is yeah because the thing is is like there was a period of time of where, uh, for like a, a week, I want to say, or maybe just a couple of days, of like server select was disabled on PUBG. 
Oh, wow. So then you couldn't even, like, choose to not be on, like, the Asian servers. <laughs> like, everybody's just getting mixed in with everybody else. And then people who were in regions, that I guess, the cheetahs weren't going to as often were now encountering them way more. <laughs> I gotta point out, you spent a long fucking time messing with your guns. <laughs> Just yeah, swapping the, out little parts. Yeah, the, well, the inventory's slow, and then also certain guns, like every other shooter, are yeah. kind of trash. Yeah. And you've got to swap to the stuff that's useful. And they've made, like, handy-dandy updates to this game already in the time it's been around. So, like, previously, like you see in the video there, I just had to manually go in and drop all the attachments off this terrible yeah. gun to use them on other guns that are better. Uh, with one of the updates recently... They added, I just hold square on the gun, and I drop the gun and all attachments automatically. Hmm. So that automatically improved everybody's loot game. Um, there's minor improvements now. I Like, the little slide left to right quick menu is handy. Yeah. But when you're looting places, it's kind of shit. Because initially, it was also kind of buggy. So I'd be trying to slide to the right past, like, the ammo to go grab this other thing, and it would just lock up, and I couldn't go left or right. So I had to, like, back up, walk away from the loot, and look back in to reset it to try to actually scroll back and forth through the loot again. Right. Uh, now, with the PC version, it's a little bit better, because when you roll up to loot something, it just opens up a little window, and you just click, 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 click. Now, the thing is... If you just added that window into this mode, it wouldn't work that differently than Fortnite does currently. Mm -hmm. You just click over, grab the thing, and it goes into the slot it can fit. Like, ammo is segmented into slots like Fortnite does. So if they just, when you open that menu, there's just the ammo section. You just go up, click, 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 grab all the stuff you can autofill to, bam, you're done. Mm -hmm. You're not having to scroll all the way past all the other loot to just get the ammo you need. Because right now you have to like hit right a fucking shitload, smash that like button, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You're just trying to get over there just to get, like, I just need some gun bullets for the murder game, please. Right. And then all of a sudden the fucking inventory screen locks up, and now you're sitting there, A, in need of bullets, B, all of a sudden, you just heard a shot go past you. So someone sees you now as you're looting. <laughs> that dude standing in the doorway in your video just legit scared the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> like it shit was gets... not there two seconds ago. Yeah, like, some of the... You know what's funny is playing this was around the, the same time that the TwitchCon, like, people were practicing for TwitchCon that just happened for Fortnite. Yeah. And there were a lot of people complaining about the fact that for the TwitchCon event, Epic was like, hey, this is kind of unfair putting the console players against the PC guys, not just for the mouse and keyboard stuff, because they've made a massive amount of changes where the mouse and keyboard isn't as dominant as it could be. Mm -hmm. Like, they've drastically improved the ability for guys that are good at controllers to be you know, upper limit competitive now. And there's two guys that show showcase it all the time. But anyway, so the issue was is like they had settings on all the PCs. So you had to show up and use like event gear and event settings. So oh, like everybody right. who's been playing Fortnite professionally currently always turns shadows off. Everyone turns shadows on. For any like FPS shooters. Shadows are on in fucking PS4 and Xbox Fortnite huh. so when I see people playing this game on PC Blackout they've got shadows turned off as much as they can so there are certain certain settings they don't let you turn all the way off in Blackout to try to keep the competitive space you know more more fair Yeah, you can turn shadows down you can't turn them all the way up so in the PS4, Xbox One version, shadows are like as high as they can go for what that game can render. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you're just running through and this game does a fucking awful thing of like in real life your eyes would adjust 
And so it kind of goes from being like super right. bright to super dark. And then you add shadows in to where like you jump through a window, you can't see a fucking thing for a few for a few like split seconds. And all of a sudden your eyes adjust in the game or the shit renders in on your end. And all of a sudden there's just a dude in a dark corner standing on top of a coffee table with an AK pointed at you. And you're like, well, I guess I'm just going to die, fellas, because I couldn't see a fucking thing in here. Hey, it's also kind of cool. That's how it would be in real life. Yeah, but then again, a lot of these games that do that also have fucking lens flare. Yeah. And a game where my, my eyeballs don't have lens flare, you right. fuck. Like, <laughs> like, also the crazy thing with Fortnite and PUBG and Call of Duty Black Ops, like, the performance in these games would go up drastically. They turn fucking shadows off. Mm hmm. But they don't because the average person consuming content on a console wants the graphical fidelity. I mean, right. the, the, the the giant bulk of your console purchasers are just going to plug the thing into the most expensive TV they can afford that looks the best. Yeah. Like, or like me, my TV's old as shit, so... <laughs> Yeah, but, like, I've, like, even though, like, I stopped being a PC gamer, like, I've always been a monitor gamer. Sure. Like, I haven't owned a TV in probably 15 years. Bragging so about. I don't, I, well, I, I, well, it's funny to me, like, how, like, just my inherent use case of how I play games has, like, manifested into the actual, like, anti-social hermit that I am. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I would invite you to come over here and watch this movie, but I don't have anything for you to hear this movie, and I don't have a place for you to sit because I don't have room for a chair in here other than my chair. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, <laughs> like I couldn't invite anybody over to my place to do anything. Yeah. Because this is all like bespoke to me being a fucking solitary creep. <laughs> So you're going to keep playing uh, Blackout? Yeah, like, this is going into the rotation. Yeah. Of in between Fortnite and, you know, whatever games I'm playing. I'm just going to be uh, swapping through it all. Because they're, they're drastically different. Like, the, the, this game is so different in pace and, yeah. you know... It's Style. just it's what we've talked about. It's just a game mode now. Battle Royale. It's just a game mode. You know, and I'm I'll... hoping I'll mm -hmm. roll in more of the multiplayer. Zombies can go eat my ass. Zombies eh. is always trash. Right. I you don't have to play more multiplayer. <laughs> it's Call of Duty. I would just play multiplayer for more nostalgia. Just to get yeah, angry well... at it. Well, the thing is, is like I never get mad at it unless like I repeatedly encounter shit that's actually kind of broken. Yeah. Like I was just getting annoyed at the multiplayer playing the spawn base modes, but when I swapped over to you know round based one life modes, I yeah. immediately my enjoyment went up. But there are people that can't stand those modes because Call of Duty to them is live die repeat. <laughs> Yeah, and that that's the thing that annoys me about Call of Duty is live, die, repeat, and the uh, the spawn killing and stuff like that. Like that's it's just has always been there, and it's not going away because people love it. Yeah, like I said, the the five or six rounds of heist I played that first day, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna come back to this. Yeah, that and sounds I mean, like something I would definitely play. Yeah, because like I said, it's literally you know CS. Is a uh, like, gun game and all that stuff in there? Uh, some of the modes are, are not there, but with previous Call of Duties in the past couple of years, they do roll out, like, special event game modes and okay. add more game modes to the playlist. Gun Going game forward, like my favorite. They've already added a um, mercenary playlist for certain modes, which a lot of people really wanted. So mercenary just means nobody in a Xbox or PS4 party can oh, like right. shoot together. That makes sense. So so it prevents like 
people from like you running into a lobby that's like a five stack. Fucking of destiny gas needs that. <laughs> you don't roll into a lobby that's a five stack of yeah. guys that are all like fourth level prestige the first week the game's out. Yeah, that happens in Destiny a lot where you're, you're in a group of randoms and you got a stack of the clan. It's like, well, we lost. <laughs> yeah, like my first game literally of this Call of Duty. Like, I just got in, I started up, and I started up the primary mode it was focusing on advertising was controls. Like, okay, what's this? Let's try that out. Literally, the other team, it was five on five. The other team, three of the five people were in the same, like, the same clan tag, and they were, all three of them were already, like, halfway to second prestige. Hmm. And the game had been out for 14 hours at this point. Did it just pop up like a body armor icon and let you know you hit his body armor? Yeah. Well, that's pretty neat. So it'll make the little clink, 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 clink metal sounds when you're hitting. Oh, armor. okay. Uh, when you shoot vehicles, they added like little tick marks to let you know whether or not you're hitting the body of a person or hitting the body of the vehicle. Oh. So you know, like, oh shit, I, I shot the vehicle, but I didn't hit him. So. I have no that, idea you're there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is when I realized that like this this scope was not my strong suit. Yeah. Also, the the thing that drives me crazy blackout it's a thing that for regular Call of Duty modes it makes sense because none of the scopes really matter as far as like effectiveness. But in this mode, there's, you know, bullet drop and mm -hmm. travel time. So the snipers, all the guns that you can put a sniper scope on them, the fucking sniper scopes are different on the different guns. Oh? And it's like, like it's just like, why? Like, Yeah, that's why? weird. So, like, with this gun, the Outlaw, which is like this revolver sniper, like, it's sniper scope. This is, a, I think, the two-time scope? I forget. But well, the, yeah, the, it looked like it was about two times. So, like, the actual real sniper scope is the full, like, six times sniper scope zoom. And it has, like, you see the green dot in the middle of the scope. It has, like, highlight bars on, the, like, the sides and the bottom. So, with the sniper scope for, say, like, the Kashka mm -hmm. or the Paladin, they're just black bars. So, if you're aiming at a dark corner or a dark room... Right. Good luck finding the center of that fucking scope. That sucks. <laughs> but with the the SDM, which is like a semi-auto sniper that's not like super powerful, but you can fire a bunch of shots. Or with the uh, the outlaw there, like you can actually find people due to the scope being better. Like the yeah. scopes are just shit on the better snipers as far as damage goes. But also, like the tick marks are different, so like your 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 adjustment to like how many notches for about how far, your ability to judge yeah. those shots immediately when you need them, is really fucking bad. So like, not only is it random which sniper you're gonna find that round, whether or not you find a sniper scope, because all of the other scopes below the sniper scopes are consistent across all guns. Mm -hmm. Like the three times scope is my go to gun for everything my go to scope for everything because it's highly visible and I've already learned like the pattern of right. how I need to shoot for how far. Yeah, that's so then exactly you see me doing. you see me in certain games where like I'll be, you know, ten kills into the round and I'll have an AK with a three times scope and you see me hitting a guy like 20 out of 30 bullets way out in the distance running because I've learned the travel time and the fall distance for that range at the AK because the three time scope is consistent. Right. So there's a, there's a bunch of minor nitpicks and I hope server improvement happens. I wish, you know, the consistency of the scopes. I hope I like, I keep bringing it up every time I can when I see a Treyarch response on Reddit. It's like, hey, bud, like, why is this shit different? Like, it makes it hard for people that don't snipe often to then learn this scope. Right. You're encouraging everybody to not use the sniper scopes because the four times scope is a better sniper scope and it's consistent across all platforms. You know, like, I put the 
four times scope on the Paladin, the Kashka, the SDM, yeah. the Outlaw. It's going to be the same four times scope. Yeah, Why the so fuck are the sniper be. scopes different? That's so weird. Yeah, well, that's how it works in the multiplayer, and that's how it's worked on a lot of those snipers and most of the multiplayers and most Call of Duties. Huh. Like, this has been a thing that's been around for years that this is just, like, normal, but when you're sniping your regular Call of Duty, you're just, like, the average person that's going to regularly use sniper rifles and regular Call of Duty is either using a thermal scope or they're quick scoping. Like, they're not doing prolonged, yeah. measured, angled snipes. So, and, uh, just to get away from a completely different game from that, from the looks of it, I think, is Double C different from Blackout? Uh, drastically <laughs> so. It looks like it. What yeah, the world so, is this? So, there's, like, an OG-ass, like, bar game. Like, like in the era of, like, pinball existing. Nope, this looks aggravating. Yeah, it's, it's kind <laughs> of aggravating. But there's, like, an old-school bar game that is, like, a pegboard where you're, like, using two different handles to lift a bar. So you're they essentially made a roguelike <laughs> traversing up a hill as a, as a seed... What? Out of this weird bar game. So, like, you move up and down on the left or right analog stick to the raise or lower either side, and you're avoiding potholes. And you get different power ups as you stop in different areas. So, like, your basic power up you start off with is you plant a seed, which is like your checkpoint. So, like, if you screw up and you fall down a hole, you don't roll all the way back down to the last actual checkpoint you hit for that area. Right. Uh, there's other power-ups that let you, uh, like, fight enemies to get, like, the little crystals you need to buy. Like, you have to spend, like, some of your little crystals to use your powers. It's like there's a power you get that you you have where you you are crystal mode and it takes you three of the little places you can plant a seed before it pays out crystals it's just a way for you to earn currency without having to fight you unlock a mode where you have hearts where it takes four of these little seed spots to then unlock a heart to get health back but the problem is there's limited areas limited numbers of those plantable seed spots so anytime you're Utilizing any of your other powers other than your your uh, like checkpoint power, you're potentially losing progress if you fuck up. Okay. But yeah, it is this odd, weird, like chill, like presentation and music to a highly frustrating ass game. Honky, <laughs> shut it, up! It was really cool. I bought it for like I want to say like six bucks on the Switch. Yeah, I've seen it on the Switch. It just looked weird. Yeah, it looked, and now it looks even weirder now. Yeah, I, I started getting really good at this later on in this. I made one run at it, which was like 40 minutes, and I almost got to the top of the mountain first try, but huh. when I realized I hit a point where like like the difficulty kind of spiked, and then I just made like three fuck-ups back-to-back, <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that again. Like... <laughs> like th this is a cool way to spend an hour of my day yeah but uh yes yeah, it's, it's really interesting like the layers of different powers you eventually come across and like you earn currency to buy these power ups but that same currency is the same currency you use to use your power up so mm -hmm. it's like this real like odd risk reward as you're just moving up a mountain, trying to get to the top and plant yourself on the mountain, you're 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 trying to fulfill the prophecy. <laughs> I can't handle this anymore. Moving on. Yeah, like like <laughs> click later on in the video. Oh, okay. See, like absolute bullshit. Like the last like five ten minutes, like that shit gets ridiculous. Oh no. <laughs> oh no yeah so like like I said the the weird old school bar game which is like this 
platform up against the wall that you're sliding these bars up and down and you're trying to tilt it past everything like i feel like kimberly would love this yeah like it it is frustration the game But yeah, like if you if you get good at it, like you can get through it really fast. There are certain areas late game where I was just really just like just shooting straight up the board. Like oh. just like nope, miss me with that pothole. Fuck you. Dab on the hater. <laughs> like I was just like shooting along and then I just all of a sudden I guess I got cocky and I just screwed up real bad, real fast. And then I, I found myself back at the bottom of the hill. And that's when I realized it was a roguelike. And I was like, oh, yeah. shit. Because <laughs> then it shows you, like, your progress map of how far you got. Uh, yeah, I couldn't handle that game. Yeah. Man, this part where it got to be absolute bullshit with, like, the fucking Swiss cheese-ass board. I was like, oh, man. And then I just fucked up super fast. And I was like, nope. That game was cool while it lasted. <laughs> I, yeah. Like, like I got an hour out of this for like five, six bucks. Like I've gotten less enjoyment out of things. Right. Yeah. So you also played the Spider-Man DLC. Yeah. So uh, the first part of the City That Never Sleeps is, I think, what the trilogy of DLC is called. Right. It all involves like a Black Cat. All the DLC uh, does. Yeah, oh, it's, okay. the, it's this whole like an anthology story about like her coming back into town and what's going on. Like this DLC ends on a cliffhanger. Hmm. That's interesting. Black Cat is important to Spider Man. Yeah, like at various points of the story, you know, they're dating. Uh, you know, they've touched over like in this version of Spider Man. She has been good before. And then turn back to crime, right? Again, you know, like she she's kind of like a a troubled villain, not necessarily like an evil bad guy. She just robs shit from she's, people that have a lot of money. She's very much like Catwoman. Yeah. Yeah, Black Cat's a really the, interesting character. Regardless of the 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 comparable directly fe feline animals. Oh yeah. But just the characters themselves are very, very similar. Yeah, like the, some of their motivations and their origins are you know considerably mm -hmm. different. But I'm not sure which one came first, but yeah, they're they're pretty much clones of each other. Yeah, they're they weren't that far apart time wise when they launched. Right. But um, with the this DLC, like, a you go back in like a perfectly cleaned up like New York, shit kind of gets out of hand at the end of the game. And a lot of shit goes down. So this is kind of like a reset. This takes place a period of time after the main game. Okay. Not like super long, but maybe a couple months after like the the primary story wraps up. It adds uh, some new criminal types. There's a new enemy. There's new side quests. Uh, there's a, a side quest I didn't do for this villain called Screwball. Okay. So Screwball is this psychotic, like, Twitch streamer. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, like, they're a live streamer. And yeah. what what happens is, like, this, this lady realized she had, like, a massive, like, fan base in jail. So then she started, like, abducting people and putting them at risk. Like in putting on like a live game show where Spider Man showed up oh, to try to save people and was like live streaming the whole scenario, but there's actual random people, these guys that got out of jail that are, you know, working for her that are just really like big fans, like cult of personality we mentioned earlier. Like the, the these are random strangers that have like bombs strapped to their chest. Like <laughs> this That's crazy terrifying. bitch means a business. Yeah. And she's like live streaming it on her website. And in the side mission you have in the the main game, you know, you do her little side quest and she ends up going to jail. But by the time, you know, this this game happens, she's out 
and being a fuck again. <laughs> so is it really just adding like a story, like a, a, sh a story that's going to continue in the next two parts and some side missions and stuff? That's what the DLC yeah, is? Yeah, like it's going to be a prolonged, coherent story over the three parts. Okay. And, you know, it's kind of just like episodic DLC. Okay. It's one, it's one, it's one larger package broken up over the course of like this one just came out like the Tuesday before Red Dead uh, the next part of the DLC happens at the end of November and the next DLC happens in December like like they've got these chunks like just bam 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 just coming right after each other Okay. so, you, so you're not going to find yourself in like the Horizon Zero Dawn situation of yeah. the making a really awesome DLC expansion but it's like six months after the game's out and it's yeah. high level DLC that's really hard after everybody st doesn't know how to play it anymore. Like, so, like, that was the problem with Horizon Zero Dawn. It's like, yeah, the Frozen one was just like, fuck, you forgot how to play this game by now. And yeah, I know. Add, like, one of the shows I was enemies. watching, they were talking about they went and started a new game just to get used to the game again and then went back to the DLC on their main game. Yeah. Which, like, I readjust real fast to games. Like, I have, like, a... Like, legitimately, like... It, I, I mean it kind of in humor at this point, but, like, legitimately... I I do believe, like, just knowing personal tendencies of myself and having experience with people on the spectrum... Like, right. I legitimately believe I rank fairly stoutly on many autism spectrums <laughs> like like there's there's some weird shit that just buries deep in my brain that comes out out of nowhere <laughs> like i haven't thought about in like 15 years and all of a sudden i'm <laughs> i remember a phone number for somebody i haven't talked to since i was in middle school <laughs> i think that's just the human brain is goofy yeah but then again i also randomly like the thing i posted in discord like i saw like youtube recommended that that uh letter from Cam Clark, the guy who was the voice of Liquid Snake. And then I remembered Rob Paulson, who was also right. a Ninja Turtle with Cam Clark, was the voice of Gray Fox, only in the Twin Snakes version of Metal Gear, and in the Smash Bros, where Gray Fox has been around. <laughs> and I was like, so you're telling me that two of the main characters in Metal Gear Solid were two of the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> But then there's, like, random shit like that it pops up. But then again, like I said, I also, like, heavy-duty pattern recognition. Like, I don't know how to read music. Man, we gotta get I, you tested. But I, I can sit down, like, after listening to a song for a few times and, you know, play entire, like, drum section rhythms. <laughs> but I also don't hear lyrics to songs. Like, like, I just actively have to, like, stop everything to listen to understand anything that's being said in a song regardless right. of how like active and clear people are talking I think it's probably because like realistically I don't give a fuck about lyrics to songs because 99% of the time they're fucking stupid like, yeah. <laughs> like oh I, here's the song I like and I go listen look at the lyrics like well these are all fucking stupid like I'm kind of glad I don't know what these lyrics were because <laughs> this is horse shit but uh no like anyway so with video games like with Horizon Zero Dawn it was it took me maybe like 20 minutes and I was right. back in of like oh uh, man this is rough to then bam I'm already at it so like by the 15 20 minute mark of Spider-Man here I was already back in doing some pretty good combo chains remembering stuff as I went but yeah now that I'm warmed back up I'm going to be playing those other two DLCs as they drop, and I won't be so rusty. Yeah, I uh, I hope that I'm not too rusty because I once I start playing Rocket Melee again, which you know, segue. Uh, I <laughs> I played a bunch of Rocket Melee because I know you said you absolutely loved it, and I was on Game Pass one day and saw it on there, the uh, Super Turbo Championship Edition, I yeah, think. Super Turbo Championship Edition, yeah. yes, sir. And, uh, man, this game is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, like, I mean, it's crazy. Drinkbox Studios, like we talked about when I was 
on a previous podcast when I had played Guacamelee 2 is like they had made some really weird games that were really cool but then they made Guacamelee and then they just fucking nailed their love letter to the Metroidvania genre yeah and then they did it again slightly better in a lot of aspects with Guacamelee 2 like like they're both like magnificent like if I believed in a number scale for rating games like they're like eight nines out of ten like like they're way up there they're a lot of fun but uh, I hope I really I almost want to just finish like I, I just beat flame face so how far am I flame face is one of the early bosses no well no there's a whole like transition like there there there's a a big like swap out like if you're just mainlining like the game you're not doing any of the side stuff then yeah you're probably halfway through I just got the thing where I can run up walls oh yeah if you just got the run up walls I think there's really only one more like big power up right. after that for traversal right Looks but like yeah it. like cause the thing is there's a secret area late game in mm -hmm. this where like it's like you're sending this tower into the sky and I got there before I had the last upgrade yeah so I had the wall run like the chicken thing or whatever it's called and then I, I made it like after like grinding on this thing for like half an hour cause absolutely fucking insane hard platforming madness mm -hmm. cause you're having to run up the wall jump face through the wall <laughs> catch yourself on the other side, avoid the spikes, run, jump, right. keep running. And then I got to a platform where I checkpointed up there and then I couldn't go further than this because I didn't have the upgrade to get past this point. And I was like, you utter fucking sons of bitches. You, you let me get up here without telling me that I couldn't complete this area yeah. without the last upgrade. And so then I left, played through more of the game, and came back later. And then it was, bam, another, like, 20 minutes again, figuring out that first part, and another, like, 15 doing the next section. I was like, god damn you, game. But other than that, like, the the first game was flawless, like, as far as, like, absolute presentation, absolute <laughs> fun, like, sticking to its aesthetic, nailing the tone. People hated the meme jokes to the point to where they make an entire level you go to as a side room, the meme land <laughs> in the Mexiverse. See, I and, guess like, I'm, I'm so out of, like, all that shit, I don't even notice it. <laughs> yeah, like, so so they make a joke about all the people that complain on the internet about their memes. Right. And made just, they just doubled down on it to insult them. Like, <laughs> hey guys, just relax, play the fun game. Yeah, I was say I, I haven't even noticed. Like, I've just had a blast beating the crap out of skeletons and chupacabras or whatever the hell those things are. And I think they're chupacabras. Just, yeah, chupacabra. Chupacabra yeah, the, cadabra. The, the kind of <laughs> flying ones that look like dragons. Or yeah. Like... But yeah, I just, I love the humor in it. Like, it's when you kill a chupacabra, it says chupacabra cadabra. Yeah. Like, just that dumb shit like that. Um, I love... Like the pile, I love doing pile drivers and suplexes and just beating the hell out of a giant group of dudes and then just doing a pile driver and explodes and kills them all. Like the yeah. combat is super satisfying. Super, like, I almost want to say meaty. Like, you really feel like you're beating the shit out of these guys. Yeah, the, the timing, the impact, the frames, like, it really sells all the hits. Yeah. Uh, that was probably the biggest complaint. I had and a lot of people I had with Guacamelee 2 was a lot of the like sections you just stop completely there's a little too much of the combat oh in Guacamelee 2 oh see I, I like just, the combat well that's what I'm saying no it's great it's just there's you know like when you get into a combat room like there's big combat rooms in Guacamelee yeah. 2 and like the door is locked and there's like too many of them for that zone to where like you're making progress and you're rolling through and you're just nailing you've got a flow going on the platforming and like dodging this enemy beating that enemy up and all of a sudden you walk through a door and it locks you're like oh fuck 
This is yeah. gonna take like two minutes. I gotta just beat up all these dudes. Okay. And it just kind of fucked up the pace. Like in certain areas, it just got bad. Like there are certain times where it's like, man, they nailed that area, but there was like one, one fight room too many in this area, or this one fight room was just no fun. Gotcha. They had too many, too many variations of enemies in too many different realms of the Mexiverse at one time. Like, so in Guacamelee Two, like you know, you this one you've got the phase shift between the land of the living, land of the dead. Right. In Guacamelee 2, there are certain enemies that are shielded. And you're like, okay, but then they're shielded and phased into the other realm. So then you have to, like, fight these guys. Oh. And but the guys in the other realm can hit you, but you can't hit them. So then you got to swap, like, and hit them, break their shield, and fight them. But now the guys back in the other realm you just left are hitting you. So yeah. you're like, like it, it adds layers and layers to the combat. It's just. Sometimes, like, the the mix they choose and the varying levels of... Sometimes they're way too easy, and sometimes that little spot's way, way too hard. Yeah, and this one has that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like so many things about it. I like all the little, like, internet jokes, like the Los Hermanos, the Mario Brothers. Yeah. Uh, luchadors. There's, a, like, a... Uh, a, uh, like a Hotline Miami reference on one of the yeah. billboards. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would say, like, I'm kind of disappointed by was there are, like, almost literally no luchador references. Like, actual luchadors. Yeah, well, because it's a fantasy version of Mexico. It's not real Mexico. Yeah, the Mario Brothers are in it. <laughs> yeah, but they're not the actual Mario Brothers. They're, they're luchadors. Right, so you could have had some realm. kind of... Mill Muscaris or Blue Demon or Rey Mysterio or you know all these yeah luchadors. So, but the, but the, but these are Canadians making a game about fantasy Mexico. You and you like just games. showed your wrestling ignorance, son. <laughs> well, wrestling yeah, is don't huge get me wrong. in no, Canada. I, but I'm saying these are these are Metroidvania dorks from Canada. Yeah. These aren't necessarily wrestling dorks from Canada because this is the only thing they've ever touched. On wrestling, like I think they just liked the aesthetic and wanted to go from there and thought they could make cool systems. I don't. Well, they need, I don't know they need a wrestling consultant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you know. Other than like absolute like deep cut, I'm, like, I'm available to hire. Shut up. Wrestling fans. Shut up. I mean, there, there was. <laughs> don't make me lose was, this job. <laughs> I'm just saying there was more currency to be had in the the reference culture than. Just reference other games to the point to where, like, like Guacamelee Two literally starts off reenacting the intro to Symphony of the Night. Uh. Like, like Guacamelee One to Guacamelee Two is literally like the 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 love they have for Castlevania Symphony of the Night is so transparent. Yeah. To where they literally do the Rondo of Blood to Symphony of the Night. Like, damn. The beginning of Guacamelee 2 is literally the end fight of Guacamelee. And the the evil luchador guy literally says the exact same line from, from goddamn Symphony of the Night. What is what is a luchador? A little a miserable little pile of secrets. Have at you. <laughs> like like awesome. he literally does the fucking Dracula line, which I'm super happy that as soon as I'm done with Red Dead, I've got the Castlevania Requiem sitting in my PlayStation. Oh, right. To go play. Because I have not played more than like the first two levels of Rondo of Blood. And I have not touched Symphony of the Night since 1997 when it first came out. Well, uh, let's go over this last little bit of news about the PlayStation. Yeah. And uh, let's go play some more Cause, Red Dead. Because yeah, I, I can't <laughs> wait to get back to the adventures of the legendary fuckboy Alucard. Uh, so, PlayStation has announced the game for the PlayStation Classic. And uh, some of them are pretty awesome, and some of them are, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So, like, what what the hell is Battle Arena Toshinden? So, Battle Arena Toshinden is an OG, like, Tekken 1 style 3D arena fighter. Oh. It, it's a Sony owned property which I had forgotten about but there's Battle Arena Toshinden 1 and 2 
they they were they were okay for their time, but they look like absolute ass. Like yeah, they do. They they are the like they, they are like jumping Flash the fighter. Like like they look that bad. Cool Borders Two is this snowboarding game that's also owned by Sony. Destruction Derby, cool game, not that great. There are better other racing games in that time frame of the PlayStation One than Destruction Derby. Final Fantasy VII is Final Fantasy VII. Seeing Grand Theft Auto on the list, the original Grand Theft Auto, the top-down isometric one, is like yeah. I was like, yeah, that, that game. I, I never liked them that much at that time. I think the only one of the OG Grand Theft Autos I really liked was the 1960 whatever London, like the weird expansion. Oh, okay. That was like in like Cold War, Cold War era, like. James Bondy spy era England. Those didn't have part. like licensed music in them, did they? Yeah, the well, Grand Theft Auto one and two had licensed music, but they were like weird, like New York punk bands and like gotcha. weird bands from like Scotland. Not you know, Michael the, Jackson and shit like Vice City. Or... No, but uh, seeing Grand Theft Auto on here reminded me of like last week or so. There's an update on a game called Shakedown Hawaii. Okay that I'm actually really interested to see how that turns out. So, like, uh, there's a developer that I, th- I think the guy goes by the name and his company goes by the name V-Blank that made a game called Retro City Rampage. Oh, yeah. So, this is their... So, Retro City Rampage was, like, if the old-school GTA games were an 8-bit, like, kind of platformer, kind of top-down GTA game. Shakedown Hawaii is 32-bit or 16-bit era. G- if if GTA were a 16-bit graphic, uh, like action game, top-down, taking place in Hawaii, but you're like an aging businessman who's oh. like a corrupt guy, so there's like weird like buying and selling of stocks and taking over property. So there's like this weird like money management sim mixed in with a GTA. In a Super Nintendo style aesthetic. This looks awesome. So I'm super curious if uh, Vert, Jake Kaufman himself, did the music for Shakedown Hawaii because he did the entire soundtrack for Retro City Rampage, and he's the guy who did the soundtrack for you know most of the Way Forward games. He's the guy who did the soundtrack for Shovel Knight. The majority of people would know him from. Okay. So like the. I, I didn't love Retro City Rampage. Like, I appreciate it was doing. Yeah, I, the music. I played it. I thought it was fun, but I didn't really get into it or anything. Yeah, I, I think at max I played roughly an hour yeah. of Retro City Rampage. Now, Shakedown Hawaii looks a lot more my speed from the big chunks I've seen of it. And, like, the aesthetic looks cool. I love that they're adding more to it. And I'm hope I'm ho- hoping this game is better than Retro City Rampage because Retro City Rampage was was neat, but it it wore thin on me because I was never the biggest fan of the old Grand Theft Autos. Yeah, personally. Uh, this continuing remi- down the list. It reminds me of Contra for some reason. Yeah, well, that's the style of Super yeah. Nintendo, like Super Contra, because it has like modern like visual effects added into right those like limitations of pixel sprite art yeah and i pull it up intelligent cube because i don't know what this is it's a puzzle game it's a really cool puzzle game it's fucking awesome all right uh jumping flash is weird yeah we talked about that on a podcast before i love that game yeah like it's just odd like it's it's not a it's not a great game but it's it's weird thing of you being a weird robot rabbit and a first person platformer and it's all like colors and weird shapes. Yeah. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, The Legend. What's that? Never heard of it. <laughs> no, uh, um, Mr. Driller? Na- Mr. Driller's awesome. I've never played this. Oh, well, this looks it's, cool. Yeah, oh, it's I like, have played this. Yeah, you've probably played Mr. Driller. I mean, it's oh. one of those games that like everyone seemed to have touched for a couple minutes at least on the original PlayStation. Um, Oddworld Age Odyssey, really cool game, but classic. It's like it's, it's not good. Probably like, not anymore. No. 
because they did a remaster version on like PS4 not too many years ago that makes it look a lot better but it's still like this weird like puzzle platformer game I went back and played it and I was like oh I don't like this anymore <laughs> like it's just like, more I, of those, it doesn't hold up that well the gameplay no but like the aesthetics the oh, characters yeah. that world that like, yeah that absolutely because the only one of the odd world games I think would probably actually still physically holds up is Stranger's Wrath I never played that because that, that one's just like a pretty like straightforward like OG yeah. first person shooter mixed with all this weird like bounty hunting stuff Stranger's Wrath is really cool they, they've done a Stranger's Wrath HD and re-released it on like every platform it's pretty pretty neat is it on Xbox One? I think it was I the Stranger's Wrath HD was on 360 it probably yeah. is backwards compatible I'll have to check I would like to buy that and play it yeah like it's, it's neat because like you've got two different like Size to like your slingshot gun. Yeah, you have like little and creatures you, that are your ammo. Yeah, you have different types of ammunition that are like bugs or little critters. It's on mobile. Things. I almost bought it on mobile, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably a longer than what I want to play on mobile game. Oh yeah, it's 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 probably like a a ten hour game. It's yeah. Like, think of like original Fable Links. Yeah, I'm I'm not playing that long of a game on mobile. Not gonna happen. Oh no, well, yeah, they got the original Rayman on here. Yeah, that one's a pretty good game, but I mm -hmm. want to say Rayman three and on are probably all better than the first Rayman. What what number is the newest ones? Uh, well, they're not numbered. Yeah. They're like all have a name for the project. Like they had a uh, what was that uh. The one that's been put out like on every platform, uh, that's like all hand drawn art again in the background. Yeah, right. that one's really oh Rayman Legends. Yeah, Rayman Legends. Like the first Rayman is still pretty good platformer, but it's not like Go, Mario tier. Yeah, the games like Rayman are gonna hold up better than. Some well, others. yeah, well Rayman is way better than any of the Crash Bandicoot games ever were, but it's still not. Like, that's not it's not doing much like all the Crash Bandicoot games are pretty bad yeah and they're not on here and people were surprised at that I don't know why people were surprised that Rayman and um Spyro were not on here well <laughs> so here's the, here's the thing like I, I actually mentioned this to somebody earlier today on Twitter it's like well Crash Bandicoot you think PlayStation well that's owned by Activision Spyro the right. Dragon you think PlayStation nope that's owned by Activision <laughs> but even still, like, Crash just came out in the collection, and the HD, the... the yeah. Uh, what, what is it? Oh, yeah, Fur K. Yeah, and then Spyro's getting ready to come out. Why the fuck would they put it on this? Yeah, like, they, like they're already making a fuck ton of money, because for whatever reason, the Crash HD collection, like, sells like gangbusters. Like, what? Dude, I'm so glad I went to uh, um, Best Buy, and they had a PlayStation with Crash on it. And I was like, oh, well, I want this. And I started playing Crash, and I went, oh, this game's fucking aggravating, and I'm on level one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the, well, we could go into like Crash. Like, three are drastically better than yes. one. But Absolutely. one is still super frustrating. But they added a whole lot more checkpointing and quick saving. Yeah. So it's, like, I would love more... to go play Spyro, though. Yeah, Spy Spyro is going to be a much more, like, start-to-finish enjoyable experience, because it's yeah. not, like, absolutely enraging right and uh so where did we stop off oh, Resident, Resident Evil Director's Cut that's fucking cool that's that's the best version of that game for that system cause Director's Cut is the one that has the uh go to the options menu go to control type C hold R1 hit square 10 times like the Resident Evil 2 uh dual shock edition had that's oh, okay. the code to give you unlimited ammo I still remember that shit 20 years later. <laughs> right. I still remember go to type C, hold R1, hit square 10 times. What the fuck? <laughs> then, um, Revelations Persona, that's the first Persona game. I don't know. Oh, so oh, like, pers okay. Per yeah, so so Persona is a spinoff of the Shin Megami Tensei 
Uh, I did not realize these games were that old. Yeah, dude. Like the Mega Ten universe is how they usually refer to it in Japan. That means the Megami Tensei. So Shin means new. So the Megami Tensei series is like Super Nintendo era. I want to say it started, and then the Shin Megami Tensei era started like PS One. All the way through till today, they're still making Shin Megami games. There's a new one that just came out on 3DS, and then Persona 5 came out last year on you know PS4. Like the Mega Ten universe is massive, and there's like 40 games I think now in that series. Yeah, yeah, I didn't between all the different spinoffs. Yeah, like that's it's crazy. it's been around for way too long. Too so that's long? a really good RPG. <laughs> yeah. It needs to die. Uh, so yeah, that Revelation Persona is a banger ass game. That's it's not it's not the best of the personas, but it's really good. It's one of the one of the better like JRPGs of that era that has it's like an absolute style and class all its own. Yeah. Um Ridge Racer Type Four. Yeah. I, I mean that's see. that's a Ridge Racer game. I I mean all of those were like fun, but they were like Okay, I'm done like five hours later and I never want to touch this game again. It looks like it's a pretty decent racer, too. Yeah, like the later Ridge Racers, they were all like tech demo pieces in the early days of the PS1 and PS2. Yeah. It's like every new game, they just like made it look better and added like another feature or two. Like there's a consistent climb in quality in the Ridge Racers up until I want to say like five and then they kind of fall down and then super puzzle fighter turbo 2 to yeah. turbo. Whatever. that's an absolute banger of a game it's oh like that, boy that and, game's fucking great if you've ever liked tetris you like making other people lose their shit at tetris because you're doing better than them <laughs> like that game's great i love puzzle fighter yeah it is that there's a handful of games on here we'll talk about after we go through the list like that yeah. would make me buy it uh so the next one down kind of re- relates tangentially to a new story oh really uh, siphon filter yeah. so siphon filter was created by 989 studios um a, a big chunk of that group from 989 studios is the same people who started sony bend up in Oregon. Uh, 989 was the zip code for Santa Monica, California, I want to say. Okay. So like, like, or the, the area code, whatever. Uh, but anyway, or that was the number on the street. It, it refers directly to where that studio was at. Yeah. So, Sony Bend are the guys making Days Gone. And oh, Days okay. Gone got pushed back because Days Gone was one of those games that was coming out on February 22nd. <laughs> Uh, Anthem and another game I can't remember off the top of my head were all coming out on February 22nd. So here's this weird Sony exclusive zombie game. Hey, maybe we shouldn't put this out in direct competition right. with two multiplayer games. Let's let's move it back, give them time to polish it up. But that's a game like I'm super interested to see how it goes because, like on paper, everything I've seen is like potentially like the dollar store version of what red dead's already doing right like it's it's like not the scope and scale but like there's some interesting systems and systems in that game i've seen you know demoed but the problem is like oh it's another zombie game and a lot of people are already writing it off but uh siphon filter cool game not the greatest I feel like this game is not gonna hold up. No, it does not. Like it looks like ass. Yeah. Although I still always will love the moment I figured out uh first level, first game, running through, you got a taser and a pistol. And the first guy I hit with a taser, I keep holding the button down to tase him. And if you hold the button down long enough, you set people on fire. <laughs> <laughs> You've talked about this. Okay. <laughs> you go from Knocking him out and not being a lethal kill to this this guy's wait, uh, wait uh, a minute. Uh, night ah! night vision rifles have specific ammunition. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, yeah like I, the, the, 
Cypher Filter is a weird, like, like it's it's like a better Tomb Raider. Oh, uh, really? Style. Oh, well, maybe back then. Yeah, like, mechanically, it didn't play that differently than Tomb Raider, other than the weird, like, acrobatic, like, front and side flips. Yeah. You're running around shooting people, and you had, like, some stealth mechanics mixed in. But then there were a lot of these weird, like, jump, climb, shimmy over, drop down. Like, it was it was, it was, was way more platformer and yeah. adventure game than... I would really any... like uh, to get my brother to play Siphon Filter, because he played through and beat all of them. Just to get yeah. him to play it again, because he was really into Siphon Filter. Oh, yeah, man. When, when At the time, like, dude, I was number one. Fucking sign me up. Siphon Filter... Splinter Cell, Tenchu, give me every fucking stealth game. I'm I'm out here, boy. Hand them over. The Siphon Filter was way more action and like adventure game than it ever was stealth. Yeah. And then the uh, the next game I played so many hours of Tekken Three. Yeah, like I I can unequivocally say. Like non hyperbolically, I spent probably two thousand hours or more in Tekken Three. Yeah, that, I probably could have too. <laughs> and just watch, man. I want to play this again so bad. Yeah. The new game, like I don't know what it is about. Like there are just certain games in a series' life where they just nail it, and then they don't again. Like I feel like it, like Tekken Three, Soul Calibur Two. Uh, Street Fighter Turbo 2, Tur- Street Fighter 2 Turbo, uh, like, and then there's, there's great games after that, but they just don't nail it like they did that one yeah. time. Te- yeah, Tekken 3 is just so damn good. Stupid beach ball. And then Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. I don't know if I played this. No, th- this one is a yikes. This this one is rough. This has got to be, like, why is this on? This is one that makes me go, why is this on here? Yeah, this is the one that I looked at as, like, this is the only one that's, like, super questionable. Like, why? Because like, I remember, get Siphon Filter is not going to hold up, but well, it was a PlayStation Classic. Well, these are not DualShock controllers. So this is you playing a first-person shooter with a D-pad. Oh, no, they're not... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that. And, and this is a bad port of Rainbow Six because, like, the Dreamcast version was probably the best like console release because it used analog stick aim and it had more features and it looked better, ran better. This is just a hot mess, a hot fucking mess. Oh man, and it looks like a hot mess from this video. This is you trying to go back in and like use the D-pad, and then I think there's a button you hold to enable turning. For, like aiming, so they hold that, and then the D pad turns and aims. Ugh, this looks like more of a yuck, horror yuck, game yuck. than Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 this is a horror game for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Why is this on here? Yeah, this... uh, yeah, that one is a fucking head scratcher. Um, again, also the first twist of metal, real big fucking head scratcher, because the first twist of metal is kind of fucking trash. Twisted Metal 2 was the best one, right? Yeah, Twisted Metal 2 is the one everyone cares about. Twisted Metal 1 is this weird, like, mix of, like, bad polygon screens with actual images. So, like, you've got, like, a dashboard you always see, like, if you're on the first-person mode, that's, like, like a like a bad, like, webcam mm-hmm. overlay. <laughs> oh, like, I don't know, man. I love this game. It, it it's It's okay. It's just not good. Like... Like it's it's not great. It's 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 okay. Like oh, Twisted Metal Two, like expanded on it so much better, so much more. Added like the weird levolution shit from way back in the day. Like if you plant the bomb at the base of the fucking Eiffel Tower, it oh over. yeah. So yeah, this that's is actually the like, level I'm pulling up too. <laughs> yeah. So this is just you driving around these cities with like a couple ramps randomly and some gun pickups. Like, it, it doesn't have any of the character, the weirdness of the Calypso story. Okay, I mean, it has some right. of that, but, like, the real weird, like, bad early, like, in-game cutscenes of yeah, Twisted Metal 2. Yeah, I wonder why they chose that over 2. Yeah, like, this this one is a scratcher. Um, 
Yeah, like that, that. That's just a miss there. That's not like a complete mark against. That's just like a. You could have done better, champ. Yeah, it'd be well. Yeah. I was say it'd be <laughs> like them putting. I don't know which Final Fantasy because I I'm obviously not. You know, I don't know yeah. much about that series. It would be like them putting X versus Final Fantasy Seven. Like, why would you just put Seven on there? I could even yeah. tell you that. And then, but they did. They nailed it there. Like, when I think of a Final Fantasy game on PlayStation 1, I think of Final Fantasy 7. So, yeah, I don't know why they did the first one. Wild Arms, this is a... RPG, JRPG. Yeah. It's, it's This is a, a legendary JRPG. It's fucking fantastic. Yeah, I think... I think some of the games that I'm surprised are on here are, like, Siphon Filter... Yeah, I, Siphon I, Filter's weird, but it's owned by Sony, so... Right. Uh, Ridge Racer, but I never... I would have never played those games. Yeah, Ridge Racer's at Konami. So that's part of the deal with them in Metal Gear, I guess. I would be really curious to see, like, the sales numbers for all these games back in the day. Yeah. Like, I Where's, wonder, is that, does that have something to do with it? I forget. Is Ridge Racer, Konami, or Namco? It's one of those two. It's not a, it's not a Sony property. Uh, but hey, I I really have to pee. Oh, you want to go and wrap it up? Uh, yeah, I've been trying to hold in this pee for like twenty minutes. All right, well, tell them where they can find you, troll. <laughs> uh, I well, I'm always that troll beard with the underscore. It's that pesky underscore. Uh, I'm I'm always streaming. So like, if it's if it's the afternoon or evening, stop by on twitch.tv slash troll beard with the underscore. You'll probably see me in my giant bald head playing a video game. <laughs> yep, and uh, you 